Hey, it's Gil from the Mind Buzz. Today's Mind Culture and Social Podcast. And you're listening to Pods Like Us. Hello and welcome to Pods Like Us. I'm Martin Cobell, known to my friends as Marv, and this time I'm speaking with Matty C, Taylor and Manjot from the Aussie NFL Fantasy League. Hey guys, thanks for speaking with me. G'day Marv, how are you mate? Not too bad, yourselves? Not too bad, Doing Marv. Right. Yeah, we're go- go- oh, good. This, mate. So you to have yeah, us. mate, we're chuffed. We are totally chuffed to be here. Stoked us. Man, I'm excited. I cannot wait to show everyone what we have to bring. That's great. So the first thing I've got on this list of bullet points is, uh, mm. is sh- sh- shall I say this as if I'm surprised? Like, okay, so then I'll go, NFL, you're Australians, Fantasy League. How does that happen? Manjot, do you want to take this one, mate? <laughs> Look, football... It's football, you know. <laughs> NFL yeah. football is just, you know, it's a very interesting sport to some of us Australians. I feel like a lot of people are missing out when they don't watch NFL. There's a lot of strategy. There's a lot of brains as well as the brawn. There's a lot of, you know, speed, a lot of strength involved. It's a sport where you can have very smart people coaching you. And you can also be one of the fastest athletes in the world. It can be for everyone, to be honest. Yeah, That's how I had it put to me when I first met a guy who said, oh, you should play. And I thought to myself, okay, I'm like a 25-year-old guy who weighs about 55 kilos in a, possibly the most contact-heavy sport. But what do you envision I'm going to do that's going to be useful aside from maybe hold the ball for the field goal kicker? And he just started asking me questions about what other sports I'd played. And once he established I'd play cricket, because, you know, Aussie, yep. um, he's like, oh, good. If you're used to catching the ball in your hands, then you're a hell of a long way ahead of rugby or rugby league players or Aussie rules players because they have this predisposition of catching the ball on their chest when they're uncontested. Mm. If you yep. can catch the ball in your hands and you've got that going for you, then you're going to do much better with American football because pitch your pads, this is going to bounce off. So all of a sudden, it's like, oh, actually, I do have a really useful thing that I can contribute to this team. And man, all it took was going to one training and I was just really, really hooked. And that's kind of where this whole Astros thing came from. Is that just uh, I played a few years for this Astros football team. Yep. And then once the uh, the team looked like it was going to gonna fold, then um, I needed to find a new way to keep everyone together. But that, that's kind of, I just, I happened into working with this guy in a pizza shop who's like, you should play. And all these years later now, uh, a lot of us are still together through through fantasy football. I mean, it, it is strange because, you know, you, you think you think Australia, like you said, cricket and rugby yeah. as well, you know, Australian rules, rugby and everything. You think, wow. Yeah. Yeah. How does American football happen then, right? Yeah. Um, and and Manjot, he's got a good story about how he ran into it. And really, for me, I, I ran into it through that uh, PlayStation game series called Madden. And I'd seen it, like I'd seen American football on TV and never really understood what was going on. But once I discovered Madden, I was talking to a fellow who I worked with at the time as well, yep. who understood how the players moved and what their jobs were. And I spent a lot of time with him. He was then describing to me, well, here's what these people's jobs are. Here's what the, the goal of this play is meant to be for the team who've got the ball. Here's the goal for the, the team who don't have the ball. And once he started breaking it down like that, I started looking at it like, oh, oh, this is like chess, except it's between two coaches with human pieces and there's the absolute level of someone out there could do something extraordinarily brilliant or something could do something out there individually calamitous to mean that everything else that everyone else has done in that play means nothing. Yep. And yeah. both of those things are really, really entertaining because, you know, no matter how well one plans for the other or no matter how well one executes, just one thing can dishevel the whole thing. Um, and, yeah, that was enough to get me really hooked into it. But, Manjo, you got a good story about how you came into it. Yeah. So I was literally six and a half years old sitting in front of the TV 
it was the day before school started, uh, before first grade started to be exact. And as Super Bowl 43 was on TV, I was literally flicking through the channels, trying to find something to do. I see this thing, Super Bowl 43. I'm like, whoa, this thing looks big. And I was already into like rugby and like Aussie rules, cricket at that sort of time, watching those sort of sports. So I'm like, yeah, I'm a sports fan. I was, I was actually a motorsport fan as well, to be honest. I was big into my racing cars. And then I see this. And I'm like, whoa, this is nothing like I've ever seen before in Australia. It's just, it came on the TV and all these men are like hitting each other and they're throwing this ball forward. I'm like, what's going on? And I just get so excited. And it was just the greatest game ever too because the ending to that game, Super Bowl 43, by San Antonio Holmes, literally catches the ball in the back right corner of the end zone and he's literally falling down and he's literally got the ball in his hands. It was just a great ending. And I rewatched that game a million times just to reconnect with my younger self to be like, yeah, this is what (laughs) you grew up. This is where you came from. You came from this game literally to be watching all the, all 260 seven or 272 regular season games plus playoffs literally it's it's just grown it's just the fans are like growing in australia and it's because like yeah the chess element and of course the strength and you know the running sort of element yes strength and speed really attracts people but the chess element is what attracts me i really love to see like the players run routes. I play a bit too. I, I play wide receiver in the in oh. a contact, not non-contact league, a flag league where you pull flags instead of tackling people. So flags are on your belts, and then you just pull them off instead of tackle. And that's how I met Maddie, actually. Yeah. So this that. is how this is how I got into the show. Yeah. So I was never part of the Astros team, but I was a I was a part of this goats team. So they had, the they had the Astros old quarterback. Yeah, the goats. Yeah, we, goats. we we used to be called. We started off as with a bag of screaming goats, and then we reduced it to the mighty goats, and then it's just the goats now. So I'm actually rejoining them tomorrow because I had a little oh, layover shoot. because of some COVID. But yeah, tomorrow, um, <clears throat> I'm actually rejoining the team. Yeah, so very exciting. Back to my wide receiving days. I was going to say, before we forget, anybody who's listening, let's give them the email now for you guys, because I want people to send you guys questions for Manjot, because he's got an encyclopedic knowledge of the Super Bowl. So ask Manjot, everybody, send him an email to... Yeah, it's aussienflfantasy at gmail.com. Got, uh, Manto, you've got the pastry press too. They can send them direct to you there too. You've got yeah, a they, of different Yeah, just websites. come to the pastry press, guys. The at pastry, pastry press, press NFL, at pastry press sports on Instagram. Yeah, pastry press NFL, definitely the faster one. But pastry press sports, also fast. Always logged into those. So I always get all the notifications, guys. So any NFL questions, ask me, you know. Yep. Yeah, it needs to you be a section up. now in the show. Every show you do, you <laughs> need an Ask Manjot question. Ah, oh, yeah. We, yeah. We need this, more segments, by the way. We do. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I did come up with an Ask Manjot, but Manjot asking questions sort of thing today, actually, in our chat. Yeah. So that could be coming soon if, if they approve, you know. Yeah, we've got to put it in front of the board. Uh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> actually, we'll, we'll bounce off that first one that I've put. So... Do, do you know the history of how NFL actually got into Australia? I actually do. Ma- Manjot. No, yeah, I, I actually that, do. That sounds I like a Manjot do. special. Ask Manjot. Yeah, that is a question. So that sounds from like a everything special. I've read, yeah, from, uh, I'm quoting, like, paraphrasing from a, the Gridiron Australia official website. It's actually introduced in, like, the 80s. Yeah, so this is just from memory from what I've read on the Gridiron Australia website, which Wikipedia copies word for word, actually. Of course if you search up American football in Australia. Yeah, but... <laughs> so the Gridiron Australia website said a bunch of dudes in Sydney in 1980 decided to start their own league. So that's how the first league got started. It was in 1980 or like 1983. I think 1983 it was, where they started their own 
sort of league and they had no pads, no equipment. I don't even know if they had a ball. They probably had a ball, but like no equipment, no pads, no helmets. So is yeah, just they had to import a lot of stuff. So it just grew from there. <laughs> now it's got a few leagues around Australia. I personally am, you know, involved a bit in the ACT gridiron sort of scene. So in Canberra. So their league, the ACT gridiron league. So there's about three teams there. There's a there's a few teams in Sydney. There's a few teams in like the regions in New South Wales and stuff. But NFL also in the 80s, 90s kind of grew through TV. I know yep. Channel 9, I think the first NFL broadcast on Channel 9 was like Monday Night Football. They used to broadcast. They used to broadcast some playoffs back in the early 80s. And then they had a few TV shows in the later 80s. And the more famous one was the Don Lane NFL show. Yep. I was, I wasn't, Look, I'm not. I I'm not saying I was alive for any of this, but <laughs> I wish I was. I wish been. I could see. Yeah, I was not alive for any of this. I will say, but the Don Lane show, absolute classic. You know, I've seen some clips here and there on YouTube and some other sites, and the guy was a legend. Absolutely, he introduced the game to many Australians. Yeah. He had highlights. They're probably like weeks old because you had to import tapes back in the day. And there's no internet, so no, so the only way you could really see, like scores, was like you know Sports Illustrated. Sometimes oh, the newspaper, newspaper print them. Yeah, yeah. Sometimes, sometimes the you get them in the newspaper. Yeah, yeah you'd the have to get like the Sydney Morning spread. Herald or something. though. you couldn't get the Canberra News. I wouldn't be in that, mate. You'd have to get the Sydney yeah. paper. Yeah. Yeah, I was reading <laughs> one article about how they used to delay telecast by like, of uh, five weeks or something, and then you had to like tape record them. And the tape recorder wouldn't record at all because the games would be played like tape. The tape of the games would be played at like 2 a.m., 3 a.m., some ungodly hour. So you had to actually <laughs> record them. And then you have to have the tapes. And then they play like all those infomercial programs over those other tapes. So those tapes <laughs> would eventually not be able to cut it. And I don't think like VCR was even legal in Australia until like 2004 <laughs> yes. when there was basically oh, YouTube. Come on. So these were all illegally re- illegally recorded, but you know, legal in America, illegal in Australia. But yeah, so that's essentially a sort of brief history of NFL in Australia. <laughs> nowadays, nowadays you can find everything. ESPN, NFL Game Pass has every game. Yeah. ESPN has like seven games a week. Uh, seven mate. Channel 7 and have like two games a week. So, you know, there's non stop Titans at Taylor's house. If you just ever want to see a Titans game, you just give Taylor a call. He's got them all. They're just rolling all the time. Yep. Always, mate. Always. Except for the divisional game against the Bengals. That's not on. Don't don't watch that. That sort of backstory is probably not just uh, specific to NFL either. I'd say that would that would have been kind of how it was with all the American sports. Like it would have just sort of took a while. Uh, for everything to sort of get it gain popularity, but then even when it sort of got its popularity, the you know they all the rights were obviously with the Australian sports, so you had to I don't know get a pigeon to fly you in the result or something on a piece of paper, uh, like you just had no yeah. way of actually finding it. But you know, as 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 everyone's yeah. got more into the American sports here, they've sort of built up more of a following, and then that's when all the rights on uh, like Foxtel or Ostar or whatever it was like sort of coming through in Australia. You know, we're getting more and more um, ability to see the American sports and it's just gaining popularity huge to a point where a lot in pretty much 90% of sports, we follow more of the American stuff than we do our own. Certainly mm. with betting, um, oh, sure. that is the case a lot too, Marv. Uh, there's just the ability to bet from a phone app in your pocket as well. Um, and American sports are really built for statistical stuff, so you can make some pretty exotic bets. Like how many missed free throws is this going to have? How many... Passes under five yards is that quarterback going to complete? You can bet on some pretty exotic stuff, and, and Aussies love a bet. Yeah, yeah. Our color of Gatorade, uh, how long the anthem's yes. going to be? <laughs> <laughs> we did that. Yeah, a couple of, couple of that. flies crawling up a wall. We'll, we'll bet on anything. We'll bet on anything. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So there you go. There's the uh, yeah a bridge version of NFL in Australia, mate. <laughs> I'm Agent Scott, and I'm Cam the Provocateur. And we're from the Spy Hards Movie Podcast. That's right. And you are listening to Pods Like Us, the podcast that has a license to thrill. 
another good thing about NFL is, though, I mean, like all, all American or good American sports, there's a, a, a theatricality about it, isn't there? There's like, um, you know, how a lot of games like you, you love soccer in England. It's just basically you play the game. It's done with. But America, they make a thing of it. So the game will stop after a while. You'll have like a song and dance number or something or something for the crowd. And then it'll come back again. And it lasts for hours, you know, like. So I think it's 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 an entertainment as opposed to a sport. It's a, well, it's both, yeah, isn't it's it? a show. And mm. It's a show. It's like the it's a show. but it's it's people probably go to it that don't even know the game just because they're expecting a show. Like they, yeah. they, they, yeah. they, you know, they look at the game and, you know, interested a little bit, but they might not have followed it all season and they just wait for the big game and go there just for the entertainment sake of it. And yeah. that's pretty much what it is these days. They, it's more of an entertainment piece than it is actually just a sporting piece. Yeah. And, you know, well, whatever gets more fans to the games, I suppose. Yeah. Yeah, right. There was a famous quote from John Lennon in 1974. He was interviewed on Monday Night Football by Howard Cozell. Same, they also had Ronald Reagan, I'm pretty sure, on the same broadcast. But what John Lennon said on in 1974, he said, Monday Night Football, it makes rock concerts look like tea parties. That's what he said <laughs> about <laughs> this game. So I, I guess that's what you're trying that's to hilarious. say here. Um, I guess that's what everyone's trying to say here, you know. That it's really like rock concerts looking like tea parties at this point. Yeah, it's the yeah. most watched show especially, on five networks over there now. So it's not yeah. it's not just a sport. It really is a TV show. And the way they set up the off-season calendar now is to try and make sure there's an event in every month as well. So mm-hmm. the NFL is never far from people's minds. Even though the season itself only goes for four months and the playoffs one extra month, it means there's more of the year where there's no games. And they do a great job of trying to find ways to keep in the narrative um, and keep keep the storylines up while other sports like baseball and basketball have their season. And, you know, the, the NFL is still trying to find ways to, to keep their product in front of mind through that whole period, which is, you know, it's no small feat, especially when the market's as big and as hungry as mm-hmm. the US market. Uh, but they, they managed to do it. I mean, gosh, the, the month that we're in now, it's all in the build up to teams picking their new players from the college system. Um, that will be available to be chosen for, for this year's NFL draft. Uh, and all the narrative now is around, well, who's going to be the first pick, which teams need what, and and all the chat shows, they'll still lead if there's no big shocking result in basketball or baseball. They will lead with some speculation about a college kid who's never played a game of NFL because that's how important NFL is to the national sports narrative. Whereas they're getting a yeah. hundred alerts about free agents signing in ridiculous places and getting traded. So <laughs> yeah. uh, even though we, we feel like we're into like, like NRL, like sort of our, we're in our, some, we feel like we're in our mode of watching Australian sports and, you know, some of the NBA and stuff with the NBA yeah. playoffs started. We're still getting NFL pop into our lives, even though we yeah. thought we were done with it for the season, but it still keeps popping back up. That's what yeah. I love is the short season. Less is more. It keeps me yeah. coming back. I always last year I did this thing where I was counting down ninety nine to one. Yes. Every single day. Yeah. So I was every like day. really, I was really feeling it because I was just missing football. I just miss this game every time it goes away. I miss it so much, you know, because it's just that that sort of rareness where you only get to see your team a guaranteed seventeen times now. They added a week, which was good, but. You only get to see them 17 times. And if they make the playoffs, that's only three more times at most, three or four more times. So you could see them like 21 games, 21 games of your team a season. No other sport is that sort of rarity. Like AFL is like, what, 22. That's as close as you can get from memory. Literally, you only see your team 21 times a season in the NFL. That is something that's... I think I I especially love it is because I only get to see the 49ers, my favorite team, <laughs> like at most 21 times a year. That's really something special. And I always have to make sure I've watched the 49ers games because I'm going to miss it in the off season. I'm yeah. glad it's only four months, to be honest, because of how much I actually put into it and do trades. And, <laughs> yeah. And, uh, <laughs> it one, would one, suffer one, burning actually, out. <laughs> 
my mind would explode if it was even a couple of months longer. I reckon it's. I kind of need the break sometimes. I think yeah. when I finish sure the season, that. it's a bit of a sigh of relief in a way because I when I see mm. when that first uh, balls kicked off, I'm absolutely manic, and my wife can attest to that. Same. What's he talking <laughs> about? It's the middle of April, and Taylor did a trade in the league <laughs> yeah, <true>. yesterday. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, I did, yeah. What's what he talking about? about this guy, <laughs> Taylor the. Tradesman. That's why I call him tra- yeah. Taylor the Tradesman. Actually, space for the show too. Yeah, and do you know? Yeah, do you know you how early we trades. have to get off for these games? Do you know how early yeah. we have to get off for these games? Yeah. What time do you reckon oh, yeah, yeah. the average game kicks oh. off, Marv? Not, not a clue. Not a clue. I'm, I'm trying to learn what you guys are on about. <laughs> yeah, Manjot's got you covered. What time do we yeah. get up, Manjot? You got this. Look. I- 3 a.m. in September yeah. is like the earliest, and it's like 4 a.m. in October and 5 a.m. Yeah. in November to January. So thank God for daylight saving because it <gasps> delays the games a little bit. But uh, yeah. this year I started getting up at 3 a.m., you know, getting that full NFL experience. And gosh, you were just dead by the time Sunday night football ends at 1.30 <laughs> p.m. I'm just yes, knocked out. I'm knocked out. I actually... I started doing it the first four weeks. Yeah, my sleep schedule is never the same. It's never been the same. I'm Man still catching up. Have, to two, it out. have two young kids. You'll find yeah, out and, what and I, children. You know, sleep yeah. sleep schedule doesn't exist. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah. I'm I'm used to I'm used to broken sleep, so you know the the end of getting up early for the NFL doesn't bother me so much. It just gives me a reason. <laughs> it's also why you make so little sense on our show, and I've got to disagree with you all the time. Because exactly, you haven't yeah. enough sleep, mate. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Just do exactly what I'm saying. I thought I had trouble trying to keep up with what's going on with the Major League <laughs> Baseball. Don't worry about it. <laughs> Push to the side. You Marv? Oh. That's 2,430 in total when you add up all the teams and stuff. Because you do 60, what, what's it? 162 by 15. That's how you get that. I number. love this guy. I did that once. I was like, gosh, how do you do that? I, I literally watched 272 NFL games, regular season. This is, I'm talking about regular season numbers for all of them. So do, it would take like 10 and nine or 10 NFL regular seasons to match one baseball regular season. And that's kind of what I was saying. Less is more to that point because, you know, I follow a bit of baseball, but I I don't really watch much baseball until it's September, October kind of thing because it's just that sort of thing. I'm the same with basketball. I don't watch the basketball until the playoffs. The rest is just like qualification for the World Cup. No one watches qualifiers for the World Cup. They just watch the World Cup, right? So, yeah, yeah, I'm saying with basketball. I don't care what you did, you know, in the 30th and 35th games of the season. Give me after 82 are played, then I'll start watching the series. It's a whole different sport once you play series in baseball and and basketball. Yeah. Yeah. Baseball has the biggest change from regular season to playoffs. Like I, I find it absolutely phenomenal in the playoffs. Like it is just yeah. such edgy, edgy. It goes from like a lot of people would consider it boring. I don't. I actually really enjoy the game at all times. Yeah. But yeah. it it goes to edge of your seat stuff even the first inning in the playoffs. It's just it's so it's such a cool cool game and you know i can see why you know it's so respected um as as that sort of game and i i just i just love it and it's a funny game how like analytics has taken a huge i know we're on an nfl podcast so i know that but i I find it funny how analytics has just completely taken over baseball like i've always found it interesting that pitches and stuff the pitches are getting taken out even when they're absolutely dominating like the other day kershaw was pitching a perfect game and they yeah. took him out if there are only 80 pitches purely because, well, I, I think most of it was analytics, but I think they were trying to say, you know, they were just trying to arrest him and stuff like that. But yeah. it's crazy. That never would have happened yeah. back in the old days. Like they would no, have had Marv now. He was disgusted when you said that. He was absolutely disgusted. Yeah, yeah. He was reviled. It, <laughs> Marv's face yeah, two more all. innings. Yeah. They would have had a pitch, six more hours. They would have had an account more of 100 to 110 before you take out a starting pitcher back in the day. Whereas now it's like they'll take yeah. out a starting pitcher in the playoffs just because there's a right hander coming up, and they yep. they've worked out the stats that the, this 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 batter coming yeah. up is better against left handers than right and blah blah blah. Like they'll just take it at anyone at any yeah. time. They don't want to overwork it's, it's him because they want to keep insane. their ace again for game four and game seven if they need it. Like they do all of that too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and it's, hey. It's so, yeah. It's, it's, 
that's happening in all sports, yeah. but baseball seems to be really, you seem to notice yeah. it more because yeah, it's such it's a big the change. Yeah, standard of it, isn't it? Yeah. Well, and hey, there, you know, to pivot it back. Serious play basketball. Pivot, it's getting there. Yeah. Yeah. yeah and, sure. to, and hey, you know, pivot it back to the NFL. It happens in the NFL <sighs> too, especially with scoring, because you're always looking at two-point conversions. Two-point yes. conversions. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's like, there's apparently this rule. You, you're down by 14 points. You score a touchdown. So a touchdown, six points. You go down by eight. So if you go for the one point, you can get seven score another touchdown, tie it at seven. But apparently there's this new analytic rule where it's like you score a touchdown at, what's it, um, 14. You're 14 you make it you to score, eight. you're eight behind, right? Yeah, and then you go for two, and then you go to six down if you get it, but you're behind by eight. So then you'd have to get a touchdown and two-point convert. So that's the sort of like analytics is kind of just in that sort of range. Yeah. Also going for a fourth down. Yeah, as that's well. Like, that was a big one this year. That's a big one. Yeah. Yeah. You Last go for tackle. a fourth yeah. down somewhere in the middle of the field. I think from like your own 50, to be honest. Like I'd say maybe your own 45. At that's the furthest you can possibly go. And then it'd be probably like within 20 from there to like the end zone. You can literally just go for it. And it'd yeah, be a good move. the chances you don't get two yards. I mean, most plays go for two yards. Yeah. You might as well. Yeah. Those those analytics make more sense these days than back in the day too because there's also yeah. been a switch to better quarterback, quarterback play or yeah. essentially mm-hmm. game well, more plans protection. that allow quarter, quarterbacks to actually throw for more yards and score more points in general, whereas it used yep. to be more of a defensive game back yeah. you know a few decades ago. Whereas these days, it makes more sense to go for it on a fourth down because you need the ball – more because you might need 30 something points in a game to yeah. actually win it yeah. these days. And so if you're a heart on the halfway line, the analytics it makes sense these days because if you're handing the ball over to Pat Mahomes, um, you know, even you're punting yeah, it to Pat Mahomes, even yeah. to the 10 yard line, there's a decent chance he drives down the field even from his own 10 yard line and scores. So it's almost <laughs> like well, let's take a chance <laughs> of get of keeping the ball, keeping the drive alive. And if we give it up yeah. on our fifth on the 50, well, he's gonna score the same amount of points as he probably would have anyway. Yep. Yeah, so Should at least you give yourself the chance yeah. to keep the ball. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, this is Greg at Bad Council. You want some good counsel? Keep listening to Pods Like Us with Marv and Down with Monarchy. <laughs> Should we pivot this to fantasy now? Because I reckon we haven't put... <laughs> Poor Marv. He's just found himself about. on our podcast. It's fine. Yeah. Yeah. It's fine. He's like, he's just like, I'm in an episode but of NFL fantasy. <laughs> just cut, you cut 95% of the shit. But that's just us. Un- unofficially, <laughs> unofficially, I did an episode of Bad Council, Linter, when they were on my show. You did. You totally did. And that was great. That was so, the bad cancel guys are the best. We love bad cancel. <laughs> Certainly I do. So keep going. Oh, keep yes, going. So it really was. You had a whole list of things you wanted to ask us to. Yeah. <laughs> we'll get there. We'll get, we'll get there. <laughs> and man's just going to so, pivot to fantasy. All right. You've got permission. Yeah, from Mars. Had, That's good enough. One of the things. Off you go, Ray. Yeah, one of the things Mars asks. Yeah. One of the things <laughs> Mars asks, you know. <laughs> wait. Wait, what did she say? Off you go, Rain Man. <laughs> <laughs> Rain Man, yeah. You know, um, well, yeah. That was a good so, one. you know, first question Marv asked, he included a bit about fantasy, and that's what our whole show is about. It's about yeah. fantasy. Yeah, there we go. Look, we love NFL, but there's a little extra. We want to be a bit more special, a bit more niche fantasy football. Now, we got to explain what that is. So, with every action a player does in a game, literally like a 10-yard run by this running back, he earns one point for his team because it's like one point for every 10 rushing yards, one point per 10 receiving yards. Now there's points for reception. We get one point for catching the ball. So you draft a team of players from any sort of team that, that are already in the NFL. So then they all combine to be on your team and whoever scores the most points in a week wins you the games. If you win more games, so if you win this week and then you win next week and then you can get in the playoffs, there's playoffs that is like, um, I don't know, like two weeks, three weeks, sometimes four weeks. Our ESPN league, Matt, they went up to four weeks. Sometimes it, it went four weeks. 
Yeah, sometimes yeah. it's just two weeks, you know. And it's just yeah, it's just Astros great is three fun. weeks. Yeah, Astros is three weeks. Every league's exactly. a little different. Yeah. yeah, every league's a little different. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's just absolute fun. I reckon you two should talk about this one a bit more because a little more on your side because you guys OGs oh, of this podcast. So, Taylor, you tell us about fantasy football, Taylor. You're the champion, the champion of everything, yeah. uh, the champion of our league, champion of our hearts. Uh, you, you tell us about fantasy, mate. People's dynasty team. People's well, dynasty team. People's dynasty team. I mean, he's the I mean, owner of it all. I've been called a lot worse than those lovely things you just called me, Matty. So I'll definitely take that. <laughs> Most of them um, me as well. <laughs> yeah, look, me and Jot, like you know, sort of took her out, took the took the basics. It's very specific to offensive players. I know there's some leagues, very specialized leagues, where you can pick defensive players individually and stuff. That's not the norm. So it's very specialized to skill players uh, on the offensive side of the ball. Which, to be honest. That's the funnest part of NFL. Like yeah. that, that's why kind of, NFL yeah. fantasy is so enjoyable is because you're not sort of looking at little plays here and there from defensive players and stuff like that. You're looking at big bus boom, you know, play, plays from, you know, young guys, you know, veterans, stuff like that, that are going out there and getting 50-yard bombs and, you know, doing all, all the fun stuff, you know, picking up Pat yeah. Mahomes where he's throwing a 70-yard at a tire kill down the field and you might be lucky enough to have both of them that, that score on the same play. <laughs> it, it's it's really, really fun to watch. So that, that that's a huge sort of part of it. But, you know, I've been playing it for, I don't know, a good 14, probably 14, 15 yeah. years now. Like it's, I started playing it a while ago. It was sort of getting beta tested. It's it's definitely more enjoyable now. Um, there were definitely yeah. some growing pains early on in Australia, mm. spe- specifically with uh, NFL fantasy. But yep. I think we've hit mm. the mark now on what we're doing now. Everyone's It's getting so popular here in Australia that um, people are getting more and more into it and getting more knowledge about it. And there's a lot more podcasts and stuff like that on there um, where people can get more information. Like just you can streamline stuff on ESPN.com or NFL.com and the internet's out there for anyone to help. There's a lot more fantasy knowledge out there on the internet that people can look up and, you know, get a bit more into it. So I think with leagues being more competitive and people being better at it, um, I think it's made it even more enjoyable. So, um, like me and Maddie, been in this Astro League for a while, uh, and it's sixteen teams, yeah. which is isn't the norm. Um, and so, it's really, really hard to win. So, if you can win it, you feel like you've you've done your dash. It's oh. been it's a really, really hard yeah. thing to win. You feel like you've won the so, cham- like the championship belt. Yeah, you yeah. feel like you feel like someone. Yeah, you you're not, but you feel, you feel like someone. <laughs> you feel, and when you're, you're in like a league like that. When you're in a league like that, players are stretched thin. So when you get a couple of injuries, it is really, mm. really hard to find replacements. So you really got to do your research and and dig deep into waiver wires and stuff like that. So it, it makes it really, really enjoyable. And it's, it's just something I've always been into analytics and looking further, a little sort of out of the box in terms of my NFL fantasy stuff, as you've probably heard on the podcast mm-hmm. if you've listened, but yep. um, it, it's just something that's it's really enjoyable and I've loved American sport in general for a long time and um, I've, I've played fantasy in some of the Australian sports and stuff, but nothing quite compares to NFL. It's it's just such a fun game and I'll uh, let, let Maddie sort of to mm. dribble on a bit like, after, like I just did then, but it's just something <laughs> I really, really enjoy playing and um, it sort of hits a lot of the the things that I like to do. So, yeah, I'm not surprised that I take it really, really seriously and, and fall in down the rabbit hole sometimes. Um, and Taylor and I are salesmen. So a lot of what drives us in our life is that we look at data and then we find holes and we try to repair the holes and we see things yep. that are performing well and we want to lean on that. So it just kind of leans to things that we're naturally interested in. The way you build a team in NFL fantasy is kind of cool, though. Uh, there's a lot of fantasy leagues out there where you get like a set budget and each player has a value and you've got to fill your team based on, you know, how many pounds or dollars a player might be worth and you're kind of capped on how much you can spend. The way we play NFL fantasy is that every player just exists in that league one time. So if one person in that league owns them, they're not available for anyone else, which means every player has value, but it's not a monetary value. It's a market value. Is this player more useful in this particular league because there's three guys who like the Packers and all those Packers players, they might want them on their team. So they're higher value to get because you can turn them into a commodity. Um, it, there's a whole lot of 
you know, it's really strategic gameplay with, with that because there isn't some numpty in some office somewhere sending a dollar value to a player and then sending like a, here's your family budget, go shopping with that. So in our instance too, where there's 16 people trying to eat from the same food bowl, it's super competitive. And mm. a lot of us have been either playing fantasy for a long time, like Taylor's been playing, you know, we've both been playing 14, 15 seasons. Uh, Manjot, he's 100% made up for not having played fantasy for a long time just because of his depth of knowledge, just applies <laughs> that into fantasy and look at him go. He, he kicked my button on a championship in a league. We played it together this year as well. It seems yeah. everyone's got that in common on our show. They will beat my backside in the last 12 months to win a championship. <laughs> <laughs> But, but yeah, so there's that re- it really is what do you like about American football? Well, you like to watch people score points and, and, and you know, you like to see teams win. It takes a lot of the, the football part out of it into a very nerdy pursuit, to be honest, um, which really leans on what we like. We, we're really nerdy about that. But the thing I thought was most interesting for it for me too is I follow a team in the NFL called the Jacksonville Jaguars. They're not a particularly good team. Most people who aren't really involved in the league wouldn't know the team either because they're not successful. But you don't see their games here. And they might play one game on TV a year. They're not the Patriots. They're not the Cowboys. They're not teams that everyone knows who get a lot of TV time. So if I'm going to watch an NFL game, sure as hell it's not going to be the Jaguars. So if I've got fellows from teams like that in my fantasy team, now I've got a reading interest in watching that game as well. And it exposes me to good players on other teams that I might not care so much about if I was just watching the league for my team. So I think for anyone who's playing a fantasy sport, for any sport, it really does help you become more aware of what's going on in the greater parts of the sport than just being silent into your team as well, which over here is really helpful because it's not a native league here. And you sometimes are only getting what is presented to you. You're not necessarily always getting to just follow your team every week like you might if it was your native league. So so there's that element of it too. This is B. Nicole from Buried on the Tundra, and you're listening to Pods Like Us. Yep. So I mean and I me sp- being the tradesman. Oh sorry, mate. I was just gonna say on, I was just gonna touch quickly, sort of Maddie touched on the whole like salesman part of it and stuff and you know it, it is kind of like the stock market in a way but without an actual value on the player like as in it's very much a it's like the stock market if everyone sort of just perceived the value of it instead of actually knowing it so mm. you know someone like jamar chase goes from a seventh round pick and then goes out and has three games over 200 yards now all of a sudden you can market that guy as a top two receiver, even though he got drafted in as the 25th receiver. It's just something that just changes on a dime every single week, the value of a player in fantasy. And I was just going to say, it's such an awesome aspect being able to trade in a fantasy yeah. league. And I, I find it the funnest thing by an absolute <laughs> mile because – you might even you might even be in a league where you don't know everyone in that league, and that's how I've actually been in the Astro League a bit. And it actually gives you a reason to reach out to people, yeah. like on the side, and actually have a chat with them and get to know them a bit, and you know have a chat about players. Some people might value players differently to you do, and you can sort of work that out with them. And it's it's just a really fun and part of it, and it gets you thinking like more about your team than just what's on paper right now. Cause if you just sit on your team and don't really do anything with it, I don't find it as fun. I always like to look for something different and you can reach out to people. Uh, Trades don't have to be one sided. They can work for both teams as well. You find out what another team needs to help them win a title. And then you find something that you can get off them as well. And then it's a bit of a win-win and everyone just enjoys it a bit more. So I really, really enjoyed the trading side of NFL fantasy as well. And for anyone that's thinking about getting into it, I implore you to look into trading because it, it definitely makes the game a lot funner. So, yeah, agreed. So were you, were you doing this before the show then, the NFL uh, Fantasy League yourselves, before you even started the show? Yeah, the league began mm. in 2009 yep. when um, I could see the plates were wobbling in our little NFL, like our little American football team. And I use that as a season to sort of reach out amongst the guys in the team to say, hey, if to try and keep guys together. I'd, I'd never been in a team sport that was so big and where I felt such a connection to the guys I played with. It really did have a camaraderie that was different to any sport I played before. And I was selfishly trying to keep that. And so for me, I was, yeah, I thought, well, what's the best way to do that? Let's see if we can get some people interested in getting kicking off a, a little competition like that that can be social and keep that social element together. 
and it was kind of hit and miss because I think people just signed up to it to, to still be involved in the team stuff. And there are a lot of guys who I didn't care much about it. They didn't know it. They started and then found they weren't terribly interested in it. And it wasn't until sort of the following year and then maybe the year after that, that we started really working out who actually likes that level of, um, you know, interest in, in the NFL and who's interested in that competitive part and the breaking down data. And, and over, you know, since 2010 then, the evolution's been fantastic. We've had some seasons where we've had as many as 16 teams. We've had other seasons where some guys have moved on and we've dropped it back to 14 or 12. But the core of people who've been in that league has been really consistent. And now we're back out at 16 again. Manjot's not even in that league. He's desperate to get into that league, but no one's willing to give up their spot. <laughs> Yeah, you, know, you have to die. Someone's gonna have to Especially die. Yeah. Someone has to die. Right. Someone's gonna have to die. I'm, I'm inheriting the <laughs> yeah. at this point. So man, 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 gonna co-own with man, me man, just, to, just so he can be yeah. involved. <laughs> man, just yeah. poisoning people's suits just to try and get them get get <laughs> spot in the league. That's what you eat, mate. Yeah, I was about to say, has he put a hit out on anybody yet? Yeah, oh, for sure. <laughs> I'm going to have to start watching my back. Maybe he's no, after I'm not going to tell you guys. It might the, be one of you. <laughs> the rain, the right. rain man's getting a hit, hit man. <laughs> yeah. Me and my children are testing my food stuck, now. Right? Oh, no. Is that his guinea pigs? <laughs> well, no, it's been a cool evolution, Marv, because yep. so, for instance, T- Taylor joins this league because he's a colleague of mine. We work in a place together. It's a year we expand that league from 12 to 14, it might have been. Taylor joins the league because we have the spare spot. Um, and then he's been in it for eight years. And do you think he's willing to give up his spot? No, he'd rather give up one of his children than give up the spot. Uh, I think that's correct. Am I right, Taylor? Absolutely. I See you later. Uh, <laughs> 100%. So, you know, that's the camaraderie in the league is really great now because so many of them have been in for so long. Things like the trade discussions that Taylor was talking about before too, simple as just having a messenger group where everyone in the league's in it because then you can talk in the group and some guys that's not really they're seen as much but then you can single the one guy out you want to talk to and message him and you get to learn about them i mean the podcast the first series of the podcast i got every league team owner on just to talk 20 minutes half an hour and then that became oh even if i've never spoken to kenny for instance who's not the biggest on social media now all of a sudden everyone's got some context on kenny the guys who used to play with him when he was an Astro already knew him. Taylor didn't know him. Now Taylor knows, holy crap, this guy doesn't even watch as much NFL. He's really into his Brazilian jiu-jitsu. Yeah. Now I can I talk learned, to him about that. I learned don't talk crap to Kenny. Otherwise, don't just, he's going he's gonna <laughs> to beat the shit out of you, basically. He can turn you into a sandwich. Yeah, 100%. <laughs> he was trying to the thing, playmaking right? playmaking bobsled team. Yeah, and the bobsled <laughs> part, to be honest. I was just making sure <laughs> yeah, that Kenny was- wasn't at the side of me. <laughs> yeah, look out. <laughs> You'd see him coming. He's a big fella. Um, but say, you know, that, it was added familiarity. <laughs> and that was where the first series of the podcast really earned its its mustard for us is it was much more and it wasn't a broadcast as much as it was a narrow cast. The people who got the most out of it were the people who were involved. The second series, that's where Taylor started coming in much more and we started to get some traction with people who weren't in the league listening. This series, now we've got Manchot on board as well. Yeah, okay. We actually think the league itself probably doesn't benefit from the podcast being about the league anymore. Us three probably benefit more from being analysts and talking more about fantasy football in more general terms. The league is such a great sport. We can't even fit Manjot in. That's how good this damn league is. You know, so there's a waiting list to be on the waiting list. Yeah. There is. And hey, you know, I was actually just super fan in the second season. It was absolutely, (laughs) you know, it's actually really fun to listen to you guys were talking about this fantasy league i'm not even involved in and for two hours and like a friday i always found time on like a friday night saturday night some one of those i always used to find time on my weekend just to listen to it and it's just like this league i'm not even involved in is just so interesting because like literally taylor is making rhymes he's literally rapping about these guys (laughs) and then that (laughs) <laughs> and he's like talking up the matchups. He's telling me who's won in the recap episodes. And it's just, it was just like, you know, I'm a part of the league too. Yeah. And, you know, I'm going to miss that sort of element. 
Yeah, I'll, the metaverse. Exactly. <laughs> that was my idea. <laughs> we got to get that going. Look, if we can't get the Astro League podcast and we're just Aussie NFL Fantasy now, we got to have the metaverse on the side. So I can keep going. <laughs> I need to know about the trades Taylor's making on the daily. I need to know. No, Taylor, shit, mate, you, you can have access to my view you and you daily. can run at the metaverse, mate. Bloody hell. <laughs> mate, you got to keep up hourly with my trade updates. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you're, you're going to need to take on a secretary, man. Yeah, 100% will. <laughs> yeah. And did you say something about writing? Jefferson, smacks that ass, son. <laughs> yes. yes. Chris Carson, ah, the jokes are right themselves. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's his favorite one. That's oh, my yeah. favorite one. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> <Like> Wally Cox. <laughs> Hey, this is Brian with Concerts That Made Us podcast, and you're listening to Pods Like Us, a great show about other great shows. So how did you transition to it being the way that it was, to making to, to bringing the podcast into being? Oh, wow. Gosh, okay. So I think probably fair to say the podcast was a bit of a vanity project for me, um, as a teenager, I thought I was going to be the next great FM radio DJ on this island. And uh, I, I then didn't finish high school and didn't go to, you know, do all the flash courses you need to to put yourself in spots to become a great FM radio broadcaster over here. So that kind of disappeared. But with the advent of podcasts, all of a sudden, the opportunity to do something like that appeared. And I thought, well, what's the thing I know the most about and care the most about? It's my stupid fantasy football league, which yeah, only so many people are going to care about. But gee, it gave me a chance to blow a bunch of dust and cobwebs off that part of me that I, I kind of had on ice for such a long time. And really, this is kind of where then it goes from that, something that then I can use for that means for myself, but also became so useful for the podcast as well, because then everyone in the league gets so much more context on each other. Yeah. The next season, it becomes something where we can start to, to find people who are interested in it as well. And this is where someone like manjot has been terrific because he's he just bought in 100%. Then you can bring him into the show with all his encyclopedic knowledge, as you've said, and all of a sudden now we're at this phase where we can we can start to look outwards. Um, so the, the evolution's been really tremendous. And already since moving from just podcasts about a very internal league to being much more general and, and being on new mediums, we, we recently launched into YouTube as well after being just a radio show for, for two seasons. Uh, the, the support is there and, and we can see that there's definitely... Uh, there's definitely a market of people who are uh, into their NFL content and are really happy to get it from people with these wacky accents and strange, strange lingo, strange. <laughs> yeah. all our weird slang and all our brashness. There's a huge market for people wanting to see this face on YouTube. It's just <laughs> yeah. That's most of it. Well, it wouldn't. That's a huge thing. Most. Taylor's moneymaker, yeah. 100%. Yeah. Exactly. Thank you. Exactly. It goes without Is there anything else you guys want to add to, to how it goes into to becoming a podcast and then on to, to YouTube? Do you guys want to add was, part of your, your part gonna, of the journey? From my end, in terms of how I sort of started with you, um, yeah. yeah, you you basically you just touched on it, how you pretty much said that you just wanted to do like three podcasts and it was purely just information for our league and that's pretty much all you were doing you weren't trying to make some entertaining sort of show it was literally just for it was not entertaining like some information yeah. basically <laughs> and it was funny because i i think i'd actually talked to my wife not long before that and I, so getting into podcasting was something i'd actually thought about anyway um I, i've always just had a keen knowledge on sport in general but specifically yeah, yeah. nfl fantasy and then when you did this i just thought this is such a great opportunity i reached out to you like as soon as the first podcast came out i think and you said all right like i'll do these like three that i'm sort of running and then how about we get you on and just have a chat and then i think we did some yeah. stupid thing where we did like a draft where we like picked like the nfl NFL logos and that they battled each other or something and then and then we did a draft like and I, I swear the episode we filmed when we, we filmed for like three hours or something and we just, on, we just really were sort of working out what the best way to do it was and we just rattled on for so long and it was it was really interesting but that's how it sort of started and then just sort of fast forwarding to last season like Maddie said I think we sort of felt like it made sense for us not just to talk about our league we definitely touched on it yeah. and did the matchups and stuff because we love our league and we sort of wanted that to be a part of the part of the podcast to last year but we started like integrating like segments and stuff where we could like pick a starts of the week and 
have a little battle with each other and like so tried to make it more broad to the audience where they could get involved too like instead of just hearing about a league they're not in uh they could hear us actually talk up like way the wire pickups and you know like people who we think are going to be a bit lower who wouldn't be on everyone's roster uh that they could maybe go pick up and get a good start out of because we'd mention them um, in our starts of the week and stuff like that so that's the more of the segments we want to do moving forward as well yeah. Because we want it to be more of a broad sort of show instead of just people who are interested in our league or in the league that um, get anything yeah. out of. So, yeah, that was just something we introduced last year and then we'll do that moving forward as well. And when we brought Manjot on, on we did the, another start of the week and during the uh, NFL playoffs last year and it was absolutely fu- so fun and I'm sure people <laughs> could listen in. And, and, uh, yeah, and, those shows you know, are evergreen. At, you could listen to them anytime. Yeah. They're fun anyway. Ev- doesn't matter. Everyone just... <laughs> Listening yeah. to ever listening to the champion of everything just dominating. So I'm sure everyone was loving that. Yeah, if you like a steady yeah. dose of Taylor being right and me being wrong, go back and find those episodes. <laughs> wrong, 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 wrong. wrong. <laughs> yeah, like Big Ben. But yeah, that was that's pretty much it from me. Like I, I, I just it's a good seeing the evolution of the show. Like it was just funny the mm. humble beginnings it started from, and the humble it, beginnings. That's all it really on. took for me to get into it. And, um, I've, I've loved every yeah. minute of doing it. It's been, it's Taylor been debuted st- on episode six. Like, We're at like 100, 190 or something like that now. So, yeah, yeah. yeah Taylor's been part of it since baby steps. Wow. Uh, Manjot's been super fan since I don't even know when. Manjot won. Second season. Second season. <laughs> Series two. <laughs> yeah. Well, it was after we so met even... playing for the uh, Bag of Screaming Goats. Playing flag yeah. football for the Bag of Screaming Goats. <laughs> playing flag. <laughs> yeah. Now I just played one game. Play. I only played one game. That's what started this wonderful friendship. Yeah. Man needs to uh, he needs to get back <laughs> on the field. We need to run it back, Maddie. Come on. We, do. we both had touchdowns one, that day. One too. More game. Yeah. Oh, uh, that catch I had, man. Your catch was ridiculous. I'll never forget that. That was ridiculous. The two deflections by the defender. And then <laughs> me just so grabbing cool. it out of the air, juking him. He does the splits, and I just run it into the end zone. That was the greatest moment probably of last year for me, honestly, (laughs) except for Debo, uh, until Debo Samuel existed in my life. Uh, He was already already there, but until you – but then once – yeah, it's not not as good as – Debo's not Manjot. Yeah, Debo's not Manjot. Yeah, I I could do everything he does in my sleep, you know. 100%. Yeah, He should be wearing a Manjot jersey, that guy. Debo's Debo in the middle. He's average, mate. He's average. (laughs) Yeah, but you know. Hey, this is Jack from Bad Counsel. You want some good counsel? Keep listening to my man Marv from Pods Like Us. You see, this is what the show's evolved into. (laughs) I got to be part of the conversation, too. That made it even more fun for me. I was like, finally, I get to talk too. Yeah. I'm listening to these two so much. I'm like, I want to say this. I'm like laughing my head off every time I'm listening to these two. And then, you know, I'm on the show so- somehow. They just invite me for the playoffs. And then, you know, I get a renewal. My contract gets renewed for however long they want to keep me. I hope I never get fired. Let's not, let's not get there. <laughs> You know, Let's but, go. Taylor and I are much likely to get more cancelled than you, mate. That's oh, yeah. <laughs> it's so much I'll, more likely. Yeah. Put us in front of an open mic. It's danger. <laughs> I'll just give, say I'll two, you, adding adding Manjot really evened us out quite well. Yes. Like it was yeah. really good to get a third voice on, but 100%. It, it was good because I, I would say that like Maddie has a very good NFL knowledge and a very good NFL fantasy knowledge. I'm probably more so on the NFL fantasy side. Like if we were to yeah. quiz ourselves on our NFL knowledge, I know I'll get last at our story. It's been very <laughs> NFL fantasy specific for me. Like I've followed the NFL for a long time and things like that, but um, I don't quite have the uh, the memory of Manjot, you know, coming up with all the stuff. And he probably looks more on the defensive side and probably knows all the positions and stuff like that a bit more than I do. Yeah. So it was really, really good to have Manjot on because it sort of well rounded us a bit more 100%. because, um, like we could hear Manjot talk more about the specifics of the game, uh, not just a, not just from an NFL fantasy um side of it. So. It was really, really good. Mm. And, and then I think even Menjot would admit like he were, probably was on the lesser side of the NFL fantasy, yeah. but had all the knowledge about NFL. Mm. So I think he's kind of learned. Um, me and him have probably learned 
a lot off each other. Yeah. While Maddie's probably learned a bit, a bit, a bit of everything as well. No, so nothing. It's, it's actually been Sounds really good nothing. adding me and Jordan. <laughs> yeah, Maddie just Maddie, Maddie just learned how to be quieter, <laughs> wasn't it, Maddie? You always uh, say you enjoyed... <laughs> you always say that, Maddie. It all happens around me now. I just sit there and smile. <laughs> yeah. Any He's questions, the humble host. Mark? The humble host. The humble yeah. host. Yeah, humble. Bob, you got any questions, by the way? You got any questions for us? That's all right. I'm, I'm being the Matty on my own show at the moment. Yeah, yeah. Poor Mark. <laughs> He's just found yeah, himself on our show. We've Poor destroyed Mark. this, yeah. <laughs> yeah. This is meant to be pods like us. This ain't even meant to be Aussie NFL fantasy. <laughs> and you see why we go for so long, right? Because yeah. we just love talking football. It's just... It's just a great up at the crack of dawn to listen to us idiots talk like morons. Yes, <laughs> this poor guy. Um, no. You might be the nicest Look, bloke in the world. Yeah. yeah. It's the great. man's really nice to have us on. Like you said, I mean, you know, you, you can listen back to the episode and you can see the the evolution of how you've grown from there to the to now having having Rain Man with you, and that's just completely <laughs> <laughs> right, man. Yeah. man John brings I'll an take element. That one. He brings an element. And this is what I like is that, you know, so in it all too, um, man, I'm like the old fogey on the show too. I'm I'm charging towards 40 like a freight train. Man John's practically half my age and he just brings a whole new flavor and energy. It's just I'll turn, the balance I'll is terrific. 33, 33 tomorrow for me. Yeah. We're almost evenly stepped out, you know. <laughs> yeah. This is how much older than these boys I am. I don't feel it. They keep me young. That's I'll say that. Um, but I think the good thing about it too is we've both come to it, Taylor and I, from different perspectives. I've, I played a bit of American football, watched a lot of it. Taylor's much more on the fantasy angle and he's been much more involved with fantasy sports. And Manjot is just, he's all about the NFL history. And I think the three of us, we really bring different things together. And and, and because of how our relationships with that have been, I think it does mean that we we bring a pretty good balance of things, especially for three people who, again, we're not native to the sport. It's not something that happens in our country. Um, and so if, I think, too, then there's a wonderful novelty of anyone who did want to get fantasy advice and get it in kind of a novel way, the, the advice is going to be just as great as you could get from any other NFL analyst. The, the guys put in their research. They work really hard on it. They're very, and they should rightly be, very proud of the effort they put in to, to research for the show, and they do a great job. You could listen to any episode of our show and it will match up just so well with the quality of content because of the, how hard these guys work. Mm. But there's so much more fun in getting it from slack joy accents and people who swear a lot. So, <laughs> yeah. you know, c- c- come and get it. <laughs> yeah, you're going to get an I've... interesting answer out of me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah uh, and we're probably going to and I'm probably going to have a fight. <laughs> yeah. Her man, your stats. We've only had like five swear words on this episode. I think mean, we're way more tame than what we wow. are on the Aussie NFL fantasy yeah. show. Yeah, Martin yeah, keeps, keeps, keeps us in check. Of it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Taylor's only behavior. torn like three times, yeah. honestly. Mate, and two I'm from Maddie. I, I'm, I'm a respectable clean. man, mate. I've changed. Okay, I'm yeah. a respectable yeah, man. He's changed. Like... Marv, you're going to have to catch up on the swearing here. You're at least 10 behind. <laughs> you just see my face right now. <laughs> Yeah, it sounds like you're in a spot where that could get you in trouble. <laughs> you guys start stinging Mo Bumper to catch up at this point. This is Dave of Live Life Loud, the Decibolic Podcast, and you're listening to Pods Like Us with Marv. Marv. So, point, yeah. why, why the change from Astro League to Aussie NFL fantasy show? Gosh, any of the fellas could grab it. Taylor, do you want to grab this one? Yeah, it's it's pretty much what we were touching on just before, mm. that we're, we're sort of trying to take it away from a, a podcast that's aimed specifically uh, for our, because obviously our league's called Astro League um, that we play in, the 16-team Fantasy League. And that's how we started it, was that it was mainly an information source for that league specifically. And mm. so we wanted to... to go away from just that we don't, we don't want the 16 or the 14 other guys to not actually listen but we're trying to make it more of a generic fantasy show that any person could tune in and listen to um we want to sort of talk more about uh you know two people that might be in a certain situation looking for a start of the week or someone that they can plug into their lineup um and they may not want to 
hear us talking about a 16-team league that they aren't in because they might be in a 10-team league, a 12-team league, something that's a lot different to what we were talking about. So we want to be more specific. Um, sorry, we want to be unspecific, really. We want to actually sort of go out to a more broader mm-hmm. audience and people can hear us have our say on some players that they might not have been thinking about that might help them win a fantasy championship. So we want to sort of go out there to the broader audience instead of just the 16 people in our league. So that's pretty much why we are trying to change to the, we want to keep the Aussie theme, obviously. Yeah. That's why we've got it in the name uh, because we're undoubtedly Aussie. Undeniable. Um, but mm. yeah, we do, I just think it's a smarter thing to do because, you know, it's going to be hard to get a bigger audience if people are listening to a league that they don't really care about. And, yeah. you know, we do, but we're going to, we're obviously going to be more, enthused and interested in the league that we're in that other people aren't. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, we'd rather just give generic advice to anyone that wants to listen. Yeah, well, You're already getting listeners from outside of uh, outside of your area anyway because, I mean, for instance, when, when you had the show with, um, oh, with Greg from Bad Council, you had him on the, on the show, didn't you? So, I mean, you've got yeah. listeners from America listening to you guys and obviously in England as well, and then all over the world listening to you. So it makes sense that you've made it even, you've gone further out into that with with the show now and looking at it as a more general thing. Oh, 100%. Per Vanjot stats, 100%. I, remember, I remember from what Maddie said, 57 countries, we are the top Aussie NFL fantasy <laughs> show. Aussie produced, yeah. NFL <laughs> fantasy show. It was 57. It included like the 57. whole Indian subcontinent, the Middle East, the US, New Zealand, Australia, literally everywhere. Um, Philippines, the top you Aussie. It. Columbia, yeah. all over the yep. place. Peru with the and number you, one Australian made NFL fantasy show in Peru. And, and Matty throws yeah. out a sheep joke every two or three weeks too. And the, and the Kiwis still keep listening to us. Yeah, they haven't canned us yet. <laughs> yeah. still the number one in New Zealand for Australian made NFL yeah. fantasy content. They, they, yeah. We apparently can't get cancelled in New Zealand no matter what I say. Um, <laughs> but yeah, look, and this is the thing, right? So even with this nice spread and we've we've had listenership in some really far-flung places, which is kind of cool. Yeah. And, and it's not ongoing. I don't know that people from some of these places are staying with us. But more than 50% of our listenership isn't from within Australia, which tells us that there is appeal out there. And, mm. and you know, everybody in our league uh, at the moment is based in, in the, um, you know, in, in this part of the world. They're not necessarily all in Australia, but they are definitely in this part of the world. And it, it, it shows us then, that, okay, that there is interest out there. We'd probably be foolish not to go and at least knock on the door and see if more people would be interested in checking out what it would be like to get all the fun of, you know, playing fantasy football and having all that analysis and um, all the fun that comes with it too of folks having different opinions and having an argument about it um, and, and get it, you know, a pretty casual format from people with pretty brash accents. Um, you know, there's a, I think there's a whole level of novelty in that when you know that the quality of what you're going to get is good, you can start adding a bit of flavour in different ways. But you've got your natural uh, relationships coming across in the in the episodes as well. So it's almost like you're just listening into three buddies chatting with each other and just talking shit. Yeah, yeah, and that <laughs> that's a hundred percent what we want it to be. Like we don't want too much. We we can get ourselves carried away and we get off structure a bit too much. Yep. But I think that's the way we want it. We want it to see, seem like three guys chatting about a sport they love because that's what we yep. are doing. We, we wouldn't want to get on a podcast and have it too structured because then that wouldn't be fun and there's no point doing it. Like the, I don't think any of us sit here and go, oh, you know, we think this podcast is going to, you know, put our kids through college or anything like that. I think we do it because yeah. we really, <laughs> really enjoy ourselves. And, you know, <laughs> so, yeah. um, we really, One day really enjoy we'll... what we do. Yeah, One day we'll get us through to college. Uh, Major yeah. will get through college. That's the only hope. And nothing we do yeah. is helping that. <laughs> no, God. Yeah. No, our, our, our Matt Ryan poo jokes probably aren't going to get done. But I, um, <laughs> I, I just really, really enjoy doing it and i think for anyone who hears when i talk in the podcast i think it comes out pretty genuine because I, I try and be who i am you know a joking yeah. person I, I like to make jokes and i don't want to take it too seriously or anything like that and that's always how i'm going to be and you know i think that's I, these guys make it very easy yeah. to do that because they don't make it yeah. 
you know, too structured or, you know, making you have to ha- be an annoying podcast where you have to stick to time limits and stuff like that. So it's yeah, just something I've always posh. really enjoyed. And, you know, it comes across exactly how we wanted to. So, you know, it's, it's very, very enjoying. I think interestingly too, so Mandy's only been part of the cast since sort of the month of December, January yeah. last year. Yeah. But I think the familiarity is just happened so quickly and it just kind of feels like, I don't know, yeah. it kind of feels like we've known Mandy for a very, very long time. So I think that helps as yeah. well. That's cool. Yeah, so- it's definitely easy to talk football, you know, with anyone for me. So it's just <laughs> it just works. I guess podcasting was meant for me somehow. Yes. Yeah. It definitely was. It definitely was. You're in the right world, brother. Well, it definitely makes enough of them. Yeah. Yeah. Most podcasts you could ever go on. I'm on three. Yeah. On three. Uh, he writes for two websites. He's the commentator now for the Australian Capital Territory Gridiron League. This guy, he's just, yeah. You can't stop him. You can't stop him. He's a yeah. dynamo. Look, yeah. I'm just, I just want to, you know, be one day, I think when I was like 12 or 13, I think. I was around 12 and a half when Odell took that catch. I was just catch. insane. Yeah. And that that's when I was like, okay, I can never, ever, ever say any other sports great in the NFL after that catch. <laughs> like I, I always had, I, I always had the NFL as one of the sports I talked about the most, but it was never, it was, it was always around with like NRL, AFL. But then after that moment, I was like, no, nah, NFL is going to be number one. And my dream since then was like, I want to be the number one sort of NFL analyst in Australia. I want to be like one of the top guys. I know I haven't really talked about this before to you guys even. So this is like coming off as a bit of a shock, but yeah. So like when I started about high school, you know, finding a few people here and there to talk about football, you know, I just wanted to expand my knowledge, keep talking about it. So I guess I started a pastry press as well. I'm, I'm now going to my own thing. Now this is my, it's own man job time here, but yeah, pastry press, you know, I started, I started my own YouTube channel in 2017 when I was like 15 and my voice was cracking a million times and it, it's, it's great. I was commentating that exact Odell catch actually. Mm. And, you know, I was, I was voice cracking. That's still the most, video on my youtube channel so many years later i've had some great draft reactions but nothing can top my voice cracking a million (laughs) times yeah i mean i don't know if you guys have even seen that but oh my goodness it's it's got so many views i watch it all the time (laughs) i need the link for that yeah i'll i'll send it i'll send it we'll hook you up brother i'll hook you up i'll put that in the notes yeah it's yeah, even a new TikTok channel. Yeah, <laughs> I, I'm gonna, I'm gonna be like OG Pastry Press, very OG. Yeah, so I started Pastry Press 2018. The website started off. I wrote a Chargers season preview, and then it's like I, I did from there. I didn't really find much time for football content, and then 2021. Yeah, so about three years, I was on and off. I did commentate a game a year, every year, but then. You know, 2021 hits. I'm like, I'm going to start my own Instagram. Instagram stands like easier platform to use instead of doing my own website or YouTube because I don't want to edit videos for so long. And then, you know, 2021 hits, you know, I'm I'm on, you know, Instagram. And then I meet Maddie C and I meet, you know, Taylor from Maddie C. And then, you know, it just grew from there. That's where podcasting kind of became a love. The Aussie End Zone also reached out. I also reached mm. out to them. They eventually invited me for guest episode. Then I got on, yeah. But, you know, it's just grown from there. Hopefully I can realize my dream one day, you know, of being like one of the top NFL analysts in Australia. I don't I don't want to be too, you know, getting ahead of myself, too arrogant or anything. But, you know, it's, it's kind of getting there, you know. You know, but I do want to bring this podcast, my other podcast up with me if I ever get to that stage. So, you know, I always let Maddie post on the pastry press using that Instagram collab feature. You know, he gets yeah, all the airtime. You know, Aussie NFL fantasy gets all the airtime they want on my page. That's that's just who I want to be. I just want to help all, you know, the brothers, all the sisters, you know, who helped me get here. So, you know, yeah. Yeah, that's the sort of thing. 
Hey there, this is Bobby with the Rock Guys Podcast, and you are listening to Marv Smooth on the Pods Like Us Podcast. Check him out. Do you have a structure then when you come to come to do the show, or do you just free form and just have ideas of what you're going to talk about and just <laughs> chat and everything comes out and there's a show there? Look, there's some structure, I will say. Like Taylor makes notes, he makes notes about like the things he's gonna rap and stuff. But Taylor just does it off the cuff. I do it off the cuff. I just use my head. I'm like, okay, I'll rely on my brain for like two to three hours. Let it talk out. I'll get tired eventually and start talking more crap. But, you know, it's just going to be, it's just going to be fun, you know. And we just, we just, it's spontaneous. It just happens. We have a structure. We talk about the play starts of the week. We come up with, we have to prepare for that. But we prepare for it, and whenever something goes the wrong way, we always have a backup plan, and it always comes out somehow. Yeah. We mostly That's have a backup it. plan. Hmm. Um, just this week was a good example of uh, spending time with, with Manjo, and then the uh, world's number one producer over here doesn't hit record, and you just lose all of that. <laughs> we've, oh, man. Taylor, we've had a whole lost episode. We had to go back and re-record at one point because uh, <laughs> yeah. your boy over here, just so great with the digital. Yeah, nailing We did, it the, we did the, the tribute reg. show. This is not the greatest show <laughs> in the world. No, this is just a tribute. <laughs> uh, but look, I think one thing that's really terrific about the, the blend of fellas we got now too is that, that last year Taylor was really instrumental in putting together some ideas to try and help give our show new elements and things yeah. like yeah. us competing against each other for finding players who aren't commonly owned who might be worthwhile in a week and then ranking them against each other and seeing whose selection of people scored more points and then chalking up wins yeah. against each other and arguing with each other about why this player is not allowed in their lineup and why, you know, <laughs> just any, any reason to argue. But it, it spurs on a little bit of competition. It gives us interesting things to talk about. It gives, I think, as well, a bit of a listener expectation of, oh, what can I expect on the show as well? And for the meantime, in off season now for us, that the NFL games won't start again till September. Yep. There isn't a lot of structure through the off-season now for us to have to comply to. So we've kind of had some freedom to talk about. Oh, yeah, we had a great big show at the, the, to kick off about, you know, the players who'd gone off contract had the freedom to sign with any team who would offer them a contract. Um, so we talked about who we thought may sign where. And then we've also had one since then uh, as well, it just, just really recently as well, about, um, you know, what, what's happening with the draft and, who's going where we, we've got another one coming up fairly soon. Where we're going to talk about in terms of the fantasy level of it. So at this point, months before the season starts, who do we think should be the best performers this coming year? And if you had to pick your team now, who would you want in that team? Uh, because it, there's, there's things to talk about there and, and there's not a lot of structure, but by the time the season comes around, yeah, we're probably going to have to be a little bit more on point with what things are going to be important to the average fantasy player. And we're going to need to hit on some of those things for them. So this is the perfect time of year for us to work out those kinks, which is kind of cool. Yeah. Yep. And as I mentioned earlier, now you've got an extra section you can add of uh, Ask Manjo. Yeah. Uh, you've given us about three ideas. But yeah, fair income. <laughs> oh, yeah, of course. Yeah, the uh, the, the cards as well. The, the, that suggestion I made before we started recording with the cards yeah. where you could all have different football cards for each other. Yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, I love that. Yeah, but Taylor, Taylor, Taylor didn't hear that one, did he? Earlier when we mentioned because he wasn't. No, nah, Taylor wasn't here for that. Yeah, no. we'll, we'll fairly win later. Um, Mandel had a great idea earlier about a character for him, which I think is fantastic. I don't want to play that yet. Yeah, well, <laughs> it's a secret. It's secret, but it's, it's in the group chat. But it's secret. Yeah, yeah. It's, yeah, yeah. And Taylor is obviously world famous for his um, fantasy football rapping. Uh, <laughs> of course. <laughs> yeah, that, you, you, <laughs> we had that M and M battle. <laughs> That were pretty much the times that I did come prepared to episodes. Uh, I know I'd like to I'd like to be a freestyle rapper, but I normally had to write down uh, some of my raps that I'd uh, put towards a tune. Normally Eminem, because uh, I've always frequented an Eminem growing up. Uh, so because we're so white, that's the other thing. We're just so shot. white. <laughs> Basically, started yeah. with me taking a shot at the one uh, the guy who won the league the year before. Um, yeah, I came into a game against him and basically did a 
um, a, a rap of uh, it was a, it was lose yourself, wasn't it? That I did. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and it was a rap battle. So you were taking him down, baby. You were going for his diss track. <laughs> And then after all that, uh, I lost a forty-eight point lead in one quarter in a game, and and I was four and zero at that point, and I lost all because I decided to take a shot at him in a rap uh, in a rap song. So I, I I thought I learned from that, but I'm pretty sure I did about five other raps. So apparently, I didn't yeah. learn my lesson. But <laughs> they're they're normally yeah. the ones that I sort of came prepared for. I, I think in a way, even though we'll keep structure, I think the new format. Um, probably takes us away from a bit of structure as well. Like I know yeah. when Much we were doing the now. matchups of our league and stuff like that, you kind of had to be pretty structured because you're going through all the matchups that, that they're playing each other. You're going through, you're trying to highlight players, you do some stats and stuff like that. You kind of need to jot down. So there was definitely a fair bit that we had to prepare for in that. I think with the way we're doing it now, we'll have segments that we do, but I think we'll probably be a little bit less um, structured within those segments. Uh, yeah. I think um, the way that we sort of gel together, we sort of all have our own takes and we definitely uh, go down a rabbit hole, like I said earlier, <laughs> sometimes. Yeah. So I don't think there'll be as much structure within the structure, um, getting all inception on you. Um, but it's, it's, <laughs> it's definitely going to be really, really fun, I can't wait. Yeah. Hi, this is Katie of Bad Counsel with some good counsel. You should keep listening to Marv at Pods Like Us. <laughs> yeah, going down that another rabbit hole. Uh, the TikTok that you've started, you need to <laughs> you need to get that clip of you doing that rap onto TikTok and then and then tag yeah. and then tag Eminem on oh, that God. so that he can actually hear you doing that rap. Yeah, yes. and then I'll be yeah. on, and then I'll be on the Super Bowl next year. It's all happening. Please, <laughs> mate. The I, I think that's skin. the least they could do for you is to put yeah. you on the Super Bowl no. halftime show. The least. Yeah, I'm going to clear my schedule. Right some quality now. diss tracking. I mean, so every time up there, every time you do a rap now, that's got to go on the on the TikTok. Um, hundred percent. Now we're in a video <laughs> show too. We can actually yep. see you spitting those rhymes, brother. What up? Yeah, my name is. Yeah. My name is. <laughs> My name dog. is Kayla. <laughs> there you go. No, we've got no shortage of great ideas for segments. I mean, God, a whole lot happened off mic before this show even started. So, yeah, um, the, the, the evolution is on. <laughs> yeah. I'm not so it was shady. recorded. Oh, it was recorded too. Whoops. Yeah, it was. <laughs> That'll be in the post yeah. show, that one. So oh, yeah, Marv's going to have a show before the show as well now. So it turns yeah. out he's I've, even I've gone all Inception. Yeah, <laughs> these these screens need to move across and go over there, and then the multiverse version of Manjot appears from another universe, and, yeah. and then and then Kenny the hell out of comes that. flying in with a flight. <laughs> yeah, yes. Manjot yes. in the multiverse the of the Rain of Man. Perfect anime. The multiverse Manjot. I love the idea. Multiverse Manjot. I'm typing Absolutely. that down. Absolutely. Yeah. I'm taking notes yeah. everywhere. Multiverse. Yeah, we're Manjot. making right. some graphics for that on Instagram for sure. So what research do you do leading up to the show or do you just make it up as you go along? Who wants to take this one, fellas? <laughs> It's Taylor that does a little research. Let's be honest. Yeah, it's. Yes. Well, I'm big on. Um, I do this with my work as well as um for for NFL fantasy. I I do a lot of um researching and just write notes in my phone. Um, it might even be something that's not specific to the show. Um, I I just like to have sort of little footnotes and stuff that mm -hmm. I can sort of refer to, or if, if it might even be a stat that I saw on a certain yeah. player I want to bring up, I'll just write down a bit of a note about it. Um, I, I just, I like to have some little things I can bring up. Like I, I know I did a bit of a segment. I said to Maddie, I think it was week, it was, I was after week one last year and I said to him, I want to do a bit of a piece on Zeke Elliott um, because I wanted to bring up basically all of Tampa Bay's stats against running backs. So I basically did all the research. I went to uh, data from the last couple of years and I basically worked out every yeah. single running back uh, that had gone against the Tampa Bay rushing defense. 
uh, because everyone was freaking out that had Zeke Elliott last year after week one because he scored like 4.2 points or something yeah. against them. Uh, and so I wanted to do a bit of a piece on why people shouldn't panic because he basically had three good rushing matchups coming up after that. Um, so people shouldn't just like trade low on him just because they've seen one bad mat- one bad game against an incredibly good rushing defense. And it worked out that basically two out of the last 25 running backs to go against Tampa Bay had more than like 10 fantasy points. So... It was kind of like waggling. Like there was very, very good running backs yeah. in that twenty-five too. It wasn't just like terrible running backs. It was some of the best no, fantasy of all running stars. backs. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Heroes They're scoring nothing against that Tampa Bay rushing defense. So I just kind of like to do like little things like that, so um, people can, you know, hear that. And, you know, it, it, it might not reach everyone, but it might reach the people that were sitting there freaking out about Zeke and going, "All right, maybe I don't." take this crappy off of the Zeke just because I'm worried and I'll, I'll wait it out a bit longer and see what happens. Yeah. So, yeah, I, I like to do stuff like that. And I often just get something in my mind where I'm like, oh, I want to research that. And then I'll just go get all the data and just write it down in my notes in my phone and I'll bring it up whenever it's relevant in the show. That okay. could be a Taylor Talk segment, you know. Taylor actually, Talk. See, there's because, another segment. Taylor because Talk. Taylor Talk is just a general thing for when Taylor's on the show. But now he's always going to be on the show. And there's always, yeah. Course. Yeah. And is yeah. there's no longer yeah. any Maddie solo shows. I think Taylor Talk could be its own segment where Taylor's highlighting an in-depth sort of yeah. feature on a certain player versus a certain team, some sort of like matchup sort of thing. Whatever Taylor wants to, like he says, he whenever something comes up in his head, he'll just find it. So, you know, I think a Taylor Talk segment Where's like, yeah, so you can reuse the drops and everything. See, saves you so much time there, man. Ah, oh, terrific. <laughs> Not that I don't like making a drop or two. Uh, yeah. I, I, you guys give me so much content, I can't not. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Manjot is, what, are you research free because you kind of carry around the encyclopedia all the time? I've got this wonderful drop of you going, well, I don't have notes, but I've got the memories. And yeah, then exactly. From that show. <laughs> You literally just come out with all these wonderful things that you just carry around with you. I yeah, I admire the hell out of it. Uh, yeah, I think I should do more research, especially as we're entering more of a fantasy sort of angle onto these sort of things in the regular season. I'll definitely do a bit of research, but I've got um, you know, I've got a lot of other things with the NFL, so. It's like research does come, but I've already done this sort of research before. And that's the sort of thing. Yeah. So I need to, you know, yeah, just wait. My grandma just giving me things. Yeah. Hey, so, grandma. Um, <laughs> the grandma hey, jot. Yeah. You know, these figs from my garden. Yeah. <gasps> grandma jot giving the figs. Keeps you regular. God bless you, Grandmama John. Yeah. So my plan and here is actually to have these two guys become research heavy so yeah. then I can just turn up and shoot from the hip. So this is the outsourcing. Good this man. is what I'm doing. I used to have to prepare a lot, and as this show evolves, I'm just going to turn up and be a bit more yeah. well, you guys. Smarter, not harder. Yeah, sort you of you kid. do all the heavy lifting, and I'll just steer the car. <laughs> What's up, everybody? This is Chris from the podcast Real Film Reviewed, and you're listening to Marv on Pods Like Us. We're going to producer Matty then. Oh, gosh, okay. Yep. <laughs> Recording and editing. How do you do that then? Oh, this has been an evolving thing. If, very early on, Taylor and I literally just used to, I'd ring him, put him on speakerphone, and I have him recording <laughs> into my iPad. <laughs> we just have oh, things oh, lying on dashboards of cars oh. trying to record each other. It was, it was really, really dodgy. I would um, love to just find footage that- of like some of the times we've gone through like, I, I, this is actually funny, Maddie. The other day, yeah. um, mm-hmm. I had my phone sitting on charge next to me, and my wife was like, "Why? Why does your phone not lock? Like, why if you sit it there <laughs> next to you, it doesn't lock?" And I was like, Never. "I didn't think of it at first. And then I remembered that me and Maddie used to like call each other in the car and stuff, like to do the podcast. And yeah, it, sure, lunch break. for some reason during that, like with that app we were using. 
my phone just naturally locked. It like stopped us from talking to each other. Yeah. So I actually had to go into my phone and work out how to like stop my phone from all yeah. locking. Like, and so I've just never changed it back. So my phone for like two years just doesn't <laughs> auto lock because of the fact that you and I just kept stuffing up and I like, couldn't hear each other. Like sometimes it takes three hours days. to do like a 20 minute podcast because yeah. we just couldn't get the sound right. We just couldn't work it out. And it took us ages to crack the code. Um, and that was so Taylor's actually got some buddies who've been podcasting longer, and they were really gracious to me when I started podcasting. I'm going to shout them out Sizzle and Quinny. Um, and Taylor, he showed me all the talent I ever needed to see about how Taylor would be on a podcast by listening to him on their, their sports <laughs> podcast. Yep. Um, so, so those guys who were really gracious to me and they suggested to me to use an app called Anchor for when I had a guest. And that was great because immediately then it took away some of that messing around um, and it took away some of the, the difficulties around sound quality. But the problem was then our show was becoming a longer format because we get into a great conversation and after 20 or 30 minutes, we'd find that just uh, the, the way that the audio would sync up would be a little difficult and that I might ask a question and then there'd be some lag before Taylor's answer starts. But before he's finished his answer, I'm starting to ask him the next question. And it's, that wasn't how it was when it was live. It's just, hmm. I guess, too, because we're, we're both in remote spots and, and maybe the internet isn't always as, as reliable when you're recording from a car in an underground car park and the other guy's out in a car park and, you know, near <laughs> Parkland somewhere else in some other town. And eventually over time now we, we worked out, oh, actually probably something like this on a Zoom is a better way to um, to interact. You can see each other if you want to. You don't have to. The audio quality is much better. The likelihood of the synchronicity staying is so much more stable. Um, so we moved to that. And then really since then, that's that's what we've lived with and that's how we're going forward with the YouTube show for the time being. Although Manjot has given me, and, and now Marv too has given me the real point of that there's probably even better versions of similar things that are a bit more podcast and, and YouTube show friendly. Um, mm. And I think that will be something that's worthwhile exploring as well. But that, that's kind of how all that's worked. And then... In the back of house for me, I've got this really crappy little app that I used to use 20 years ago when I was making little drop ads for a community radio station that has all the familiar tools. In it. And I don't need anything tricky. I'm not, you know, trying to wow anyone with our production quality. Um, I want urgency and I want it to sound fun, but I'm also not trying to make it, you know, the most pristine thing on earth. And I've been using this dodgy little thing called WavePad. And it's literally yep. a one channel thing. If you want to add multiple sounds and you've literally got to layer them on top of each other in the same sound channel. And it's just, it's what I was familiar with. So that's what I've been using forever and ever. Amen. And I still do. I still do. I make all our drops on it a whole lot. I still use it. Wow. So about, about, how old is this thing from? Where's this from? Uh, it, and it's freeware. You can just download the most recent version of this dodgy old software that's been around forever um, through NCH Software Studios. It's freeware. And uh, you can just, live on that with very few features um and to get more features it cost me i don't know 39 bucks once off now even a cheapskate like me has got 39 bucks for something like that to get a couple more features so yeah that's better it. than that's, audition that's the sum total of the investment that i put into this podcast aside yeah. from buying my own merchandise <laughs> yeah, better than audition for sure yeah i've been like yeah, so actually it. Yeah, I've been learning some sound sort of things in uni. I bet you have. Yeah, some digital media. Been doing some classes on video and sound. We have one class in like Photoshop. Literally half the semester was on audio. And now we're into the video segment. So, you know, maybe I can take up some of the sort of editing thing if I can find the time. Yeah. You know, I, I can maybe do some video sort of things because as Maddie saw with our live stream, I did some cool things about videos. Yes, so indeed. Who knows what could be the future? Man, John and I, a yeah. couple of months back, met on a field and in Canberra. We set our phones up to live stream it. And then we yep. took the recordings and the manjo even remixed a bunch of those recordings too to create some social media stuff. And that that was wild. Um He's, he's definitely shown me a whole bunch of stuff that uh, I have no idea how to do. So I think between the three of us, we put all our heads together, we'll end up coming up with a pretty good show. Uh, and it's still really in its infancy, which is kind of the cool thing. Um, yeah, this Aussie NFL fantasy version of this show is still kind of such a baby. And we come to it with a whole bunch of different tools that each of us bring into it. 
and some really awesome familiarity. I mean, Taylor and I've been working together on this thing for almost two years in some way, shape or form. Um, so I, I, I can see how it's going to build over time. And I don't even really necessarily know all the wonderful things we're going to be able to do, but I can see that it's there. It's there to be had. And, um, and I think the blend of people we've got for this show is right for it to be, to be really good. Yeah, absolutely. Hey, it's the boys from Saw Spoken, and we are so glad that you are listening to our new friend, Marv, and his podcast, Pods Like Us. Yeah, we were recently on the show for a couple of episodes, and we really enjoyed it. And if you'd like to catch a little bit more of us with all the raunchiness and sauce-based humor that you're used to, feel free to check us out on our show. But in the meantime, keep enjoying Pods Like Us with Marv. We enjoyed talking with Marv as much as we hope you enjoy listening to him. Now back to the show. Um, what was I going to say? So, what are you what are you doing with video then? I mean, what are you using with that? Are you you're having to edit video as well, and then that because that's something new for you now, Matt, isn't it? Doing video, hundred percent. Because I was always going to be a radio guy, so video. Yeah. Anything it was my video, fault. Like, oh, it was my fault. Yeah, because I fault. saw the sort of thing. I I was like, I I looked at the Aussie end zone, and I was like, we can do video too for us. I'm sure Maddie's got something. We we have YouTube. YouTube can maybe spread the word a bit more about our podcast, a new platform. You know, now we're looking at TikTok as well. That could be somewhere. Instagram, there's some videos on there as well. So we can yeah. just get that sort of video content up as well. I think that could be a good idea to grow the podcast. That's just how I see it. I know Maddie's got to take a bit more work, but oh, well, if I can create steps, some... Yeah. Yeah, if, if I can get some video, you know, create some memes on the side for the social medias, then yeah. who oh. knows? Yeah, can't get enough yeah. memes. Because no, no. <laughs> yeah, so yeah. the one thing is, yeah, I I want Maddie to always put us in, not single speaker view, but all of us, because I want to see those facial reactions. <laughs> I think that was the last episode where it's like the rust trade, and I want to I want to kind of get. The sort of reaction I had to what Taylor was saying about Russell Wilson just yeah. getting traded to the Broncos and he how Taylor mad. like that, and I think I was like, "Oh, like the Stephen A. meme where Stephen A. is just like <laughs> <laughs> that that sort of thing where he rises up in the chair." Yeah, yeah. I keep saying takes, something crazy. Hot takes about Russ Wilson, we all know that. <laughs> Mate, that <laughs> <Yeah>. was spicy. <laughs> Look, just give me those videos, Matty. I'll I'll get something done <laughs> on the weekend. I'll send it to you, mate. Yeah. We, yeah. We're using. Premier Rush as well in the background for me because and partly on Manjot's backing as well, but also uh, I've got a mate from a another part of the podcast world. Of, um, his name is uh, Gobs from the Bub and Gobs Show. Yeah, and uh, yeah. I've been working with him for a long time, and he's awesome. He is a very strong uh, audio visual creator as well, and he suggested for a novice to Premier Rush. So when you start hearing the same thing from a few different places, it's silly not to not to explore it. And and they've been dead right. It, for a novice like me, it has been pretty simple for me to be able to put together some things that we've been able to publish and the professionalism will probably get there over time. It's something that I'm definitely willing to take tips on as well. Um, but it's something that Manjot had suggested as well. And um, I think the, the ability to grow that will only get better and better. I spent some time with another mate of mine from uh, a wonderful podcast, a Canadian lady named Vic, who runs a podcast called Lit with Vic. And she's uh, into yep. literary history and um it, it's a great podcast too so check it out with vic podcast but she also put me in touch with canva which is a great little creating app for social media as well which i've yes i've got to spend more time dabbling with as well me too i've been recently adding tiktok so yeah i'm just on this voyage of discovery with video and video and, and moving graphic it's stuff i've never really had to live with before but it's the future where we need to go and um uh, yeah, you know, I think that the three of us are really committed to making this something that is a bit more visual and yeah, a bit Canva, easier to access. I've been way. using that too for my own personal page, but yeah, it's just a Your great app. Great, it's just great. Yeah, pastry press. You know, just we're we're coming up with some cross cross collaboration ideas between pastry press, Aussie, and uh, NFL fantasy. You know, it's just it, I love that new collab feature. It just made life so, so much easier. It's not. Yeah. It's like you can pull together all your followers get the likes together it's like you're working as a team absolutely the best thing instagram has ever done yep it's Hands absolutely down. the best absolutely Hands the down. best so it's man established audience on his pastry press site it's our established audience 
And then anyone who's on the fringe of that, it may well pop up in their, you know, suggestions. So it, it just, it helps you get so much more reach. Yeah, absolutely. So the music and all the transitions <laughs> and, and, and everything, I mean, how, how do you, how have you got all that together? And yeah, how, how's that come, come about? I haven't even asked. Do you guys actually even like the music we use? That real I disco jazzy. I love. It. I know how to play. That was kind of annoying. Not sold. No, no, I'm sold, mate. Oh, me. Sure? <laughs> so the <laughs> song that we're using, we've literally. I it just. It was a song from last year's Eurovision Song Contest. Uh, <laughs> this Icelandic band who are yeah. a whole bunch of I fun. Oh my gosh! I had to search it up because I heard the. I heard one of the lines. I searched it up on YouTube. I found the song. I was like. Oh, that's where Maddie that's gets all the drops from. Yeah. That's where he gets all the drops from. So one day they're going to come after us and tell us to cease and desist. But until then, <laughs> we're working with this Icelandic pop song, which is so much fun. Um, and so we, we that that's kind of been the basis for us because it's got that, you know, really high energy, a little bit of silliness, not terribly take ourselves seriously element to the, to the sound of that, which I thought complimented as well. Absolutely. The way that song's built too, it's kind of broken into four or five stages where the music rolls along at this high pace and then stops and then picks up again. Five seconds or something like that. There's a chunk of music that's that big and we can play with that. Or if it's something that's mm. shorter, 15 seconds, that song's naturally built in ways that it's just kind of cut up like a as on a, on a, on a cake. <laughs> Yeah. So that song as well is just super handy for that. Um, the, the the beautiful thing about a show like this too is I always wanted it to be a bit FM radio breakfast. Yep. Um, a little bit wacky, a little bit zany, pretty high energy, people who are pretty self-deprecating and, and are, you know, are really leaning on the fun element. Uh, fantasy football is a game uh, revolving around a sport that's a game where the, the stakes are really nothing. Um, so, you know, if you can't have fun doing it, you, you're really in the wrong spot. And we kind of want to lean on that a bit. And I think that the, the ability to, to toy around with segments also helps lean into that to say, okay, well, let's have a segment where just Taylor goes hog wild about something he's mad about. Um, well, it, that was kind of even a segment we had where we just walk out our goat. That was a whole segment last year of us just complaining about something that happened in the league that week. Um, us having our match up against each other for who we thought we should pick in our teams of people to score points. And, and we pit out little teams of collaborated, you know, off cuts players who wouldn't generally be owned, who might be worthwhile starting. And we'd pit them against each other. Okay. Let's make a, a drop for that um, to try and call, Hey, here's a segment. Here's he, you're expecting it. Um, the, the guys give us so much great content with just the banter as well. It would be a real pity for Taylor to see something outrageous and then never be heard again. Don't you think, Taylor? That oh, I'd be a worse. travesty, mate. And yeah, like, really. if the world can't hear me talk about Matt Ryan shitting his undies and it leaking into his arm um, shoes, then like, what's the point of us even living, mate? Mate, I couldn't <laughs> agree more. I couldn't agree more. So, you know, it's a way of keeping some of these really, I don't know, some of the really sem- <laughs> the kind of seminal moments that, you know, Last week, everyone had AIDS. This week, everyone has YAIDS. <laughs> that's a terrific moment. <laughs> that's another. That's another. <laughs> you can't that's make cool. that stuff yes. up. And, and I just don't want to see terrific yeah. content like that get lived once and then just die. So it's just another way of keeping that alive as well. Yeah, I feel like it's part of Aussie tradition. We've had the footy show. We had it, actually. It's It's been cancelled now. But we had it for so many years. And I feel like our show is kind of just... A continuation of that sort of banter. Obviously, we don't thought. have the sort of, yeah, we don't have the sort of practical jokes that they had, but we have, you know, it's just a podcast that could be somewhat similar to the banter levels of the footy show. So, you know, I, I just, I think we can reconnect with that sort of vibe we used to have in the 2000s with those footy shows and stuff. Yeah. I think so. And I think there's kind of a funness in being a little daggy and not being, yeah. not trying to be so polished. I think there's yeah. kind of a fun in, in us being a bit bush mechanic in how we go about it. It kind of lends itself to being, being Aussie as well of just, we're not too serious. Yeah. We'll have a laugh at ourselves. We'll poke fun at ourselves as well as each other. Yeah. I think all of that's really authentic to the way the character of, of our national identity is, and we all kind of live that. It's not not just sort of something that I think foreigners sort of see about us, but we also kind of live it. Um, and I think it's important for 
um, for us to, to put that forward as well because already half of our audience and more is folks from overseas and it's just the easiest way to engage is when you get something that you're expecting. And then once you get in from the hook of that, okay, these are brash Aussies who, who talk pretty loosely and you get in there and you spend more time with it, then hopefully we can help develop even more understanding about the way our culture kind of works. Um, because, yeah, I mean, it is one of these weird things where Australia is this country where I would call someone who I don't know, oh, g'day, mate, how you going? But my mate, Taylor, I might call him a bastard because that's the way our lexicon works. <laughs> Taylor, how are you doing, you stupid bastard? It's a yeah. term of endearment. It's one it of the is. few countries where yeah. those, those you know, I re- what's the word I'm even looking for here? But these weird idiosyncrasies about the way our lexicon works happens and you don't get that unless you spend the time. So we tr- kind of want to be as disarming as we can to say, come join us, come join us. But once you're in, look out. It's it's a wild ride. No way going, <laughs> That's no kind of going back. At. Yeah, no way and back. And again, I've been called far worse. So yeah. <laughs> you take that <laughs> Mostly by me. Yeah. <laughs> and my wife. And your wife. <laughs> <laughs> Well, they're allowed to. She's a good woman, that one. She's- <laughs> so, hey, this is Tim for Bad Counsel. You want some good counsel? Keep listening to the smooth, dulcet tones of Marv on Pods Like Us. <laughs> but but you, you, you put, you put, you, it's, it's great because you, you play on the, 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 the Aussiness of it all with the, the introduction. You've got all the, the clips from past episodes of where that, comes out in you and then you play on it as well with the the new logo as well that you've got that that matty has on that fantastic t-shirt oh, that yes. he's wearing right there <laughs> but um in fact the logo actually shows it even more because you've got like you've got the koala and then you've got the uh, the kangaroo on there and everything as well so you, is, you play on is. it and i think that's that's brilliant yeah. to push that yeah, oh, yeah. it's pretty deliberate too. So that's the real cross culture thing. We've been really talking a lot about how do you go cross culture a bit to say, all right, so everything that's American and not undeniably American about American football is is all that iconography around what's it like to be American. We've got this beautiful graphic of the manjot of liberty, for goodness sake. Um, what a great way to cross cultures with this Aussie as Sikh Australian yeah. holding up the torch on one of the most iconic monoliths on the entire face of the earth. Like what a wonderful way to clash cultures. And so we, we've tried to find as many ways as we can to sort of go, okay, so it's everything that's undeniably Aussie. It's everything that's undeniably American. Let's just throw it in and mix it up. The logo is kind of fun like that too, because it's got the American football. It's all very green and gold. We think that's probably the best way to put Australia forward over the, the red, white, and blue. I think green and gold is much, much more identifiably Aussie. Yeah. And it's the shirt in particular is like, well, that's clearly just us ripping off the US flag and making it as Aussie yeah. as hell. So yeah. it's kind of a bit of a, a crack like that. And we, we've done that with a bunch of stuff. And I, I think it's the funnest way to, to try and play both parts and be like, hey, okay, so US, there's heaps that's familiar here. Aussies, there's heaps that's familiar here. Um, come and experience the part that you're not so familiar with in a really disarming way. So who came up with the logo? So Maddie, right? It's mainly me. Yeah. I love logos, by the way. Every uh, I've got what is it, 14 fantasy football teams, and I've created a custom logo for every single one. <laughs> I just love <laughs> logos. Yeah. Go through, some all our yeah. Go through some of your name final uh the finalists for your team names faster next year, mate. Oh bloody yeah. hell. <laughs> Taylor has given me. This is just something from last year's show too. Taylor's given he, me. He, he he announced like halfway through last year that he he's done with his team name in Astro. Yeah, you it's know, he's, go. he's had a couple of years here. He hasn't made the finals. Blah blah blah. So and he I'm and he proud put out franchise mate team names. And so I I brought it upon myself because you know being the you know the professional law that I am. And I heard a call from him that he needed some brilliant team name advice. So I brought a team name every single week to my segment. <laughs> and uh, Maddie can take it away with some name. of the wonderful names that I brought up. I don't know how he's going to make a decision because they're all just fantastic. A couple of them are great. There's the Carabar Quok Suckers, which is pretty much just, you know, always <laughs> the Carabar Kings. Carabar Comebacks because I won a couple of games in a row. The ACT <laughs> Assholes, thanks for that one. The Western Wankers. <laughs> Yep. <laughs> ACT ass clowns, the uh, Gungal and Goobers. That's the part of Canberra I live in. The wankers who are just wankers. I love that one. That, that's, yep. that's got a 
drawing up wankers. Um, that, that doesn't. Yeah, I've got about it. ten to choose from, <laughs> and I've made logos for all of them, by the way. <laughs> So we'll put it to a fan vote before the season starts. Gosh. Yeah, now what gosh. does that what does that last one look like? Hmm. Oh gosh, okay, hang on. I'm gonna <laughs> see you, Marv, in the Instagram. Dare I look? <laughs> I don't think you want me to share my screen, but you'll lose <laughs> you'll lose your clean rating. <laughs> Bro, I don't this know. Is... We just spent a solid minute with me just using casual swearing there. <laughs> yeah, it's the clean rating's gone. So yeah, we were nice. clean for so long, guys. Come on. I'm going to send Marv this picture with those nine <laughs> logos on it just in his Instagram and see how he handles this. Oh, shit. I'll share, send it to you two boys, too. <laughs> yeah, send it to group chat. I did not oh, see He's it. done it. <laughs> he's done. Yeah, of course I have. I'm a man of my word, Marv. <laughs> I, all right. All right. Here it is. <laughs> 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 uh, I spent my evenings oh. just sitting on the couch, oh, making an ACT assholes. One. I haven't got uh, in there the Gary glory holes. This is one that Taylor also did. Yeah, that was a good one. Yeah, um, yeah no, it's, yeah, it's, it's a showstopper. Glory. I'm keeping it under wraps. No one's seen it. No, I'm not even Taylor. I've shown him everything else. <laughs> I haven't shown him that one. Gary Glory Holes. <laughs> Marv, I hope you've got an adult rating on this. Because Look, has anyone sorry, ever heard better name advice? Like, it's <laughs> absolutely fantastic. I'm getting it today by George Ramon Oh, dear. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> He's naming my children one day. Yeah. There you go. So, yeah, yeah that's, uh, that's the level of... <laughs> That's a level of effort we go into with uh, with visual content on our podcast, Marv. Yep. I mean, gosh, does it all. And have a look at the Instagram because we've got a lot of stupidity on there. Like the Man Jot of Liberty has got to be a crowning moment. I love that thing. Oh, it's a thing of beauty. Um, what's the other statue of you, Taylor? You're the, you're the Lincoln Monument, aren't you? You're, you're sitting in a big yeah, granite yeah. chair. That's looking him. all very wisdomous and smug <sighs> because you've won the championship. <laughs> I just want people to know there's a real level of sophistication in this podcast. You know, we're just, we're very, very esteemed in what we do. And, you know, we've had the Poetry Society um, come yes, to me that's what it's and called. afford yes. me and make me an honorary ne- a member. And, yeah. um, you know, with, with those names you just brought up, you know, I'm, 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 I'm expecting some sort of doctorate to be sent to me pretty soon. So, um, yeah. What was your question about uh, the the Lincoln thing? Yeah, look, mate, that was just yeah. You're Abe Lincoln, aren't you? My, yeah, that's just demortalizing my fantastic season last year, where it felt like I couldn't lose. So um, next year, it's probably me in the toilet when I'm going horrendous. I reckon I could re-engineer that into being a toilet as well. Sending that to Marv as well. Oh, well, I'm expecting Season's that one. So great, it had to be immortalized. Yeah, yeah, he's carved in stone. We're mm. never going to hear the fucking end of the year that Taylor won the championship. My God. Yeah. <laughs> We're not going to hear. I might, be, Look, I might be the vet. Yeah. I might be the bigger oh, asshole this year. Yeah. <laughs> I told yeah. you. I yeah. sent it to him. <laughs> Through the magic of the internet. Yeah. A legend. Yeah. A season so great it had to be immortalized. That's very true. Oh, dear me. It was number one you seed for all every- but one week. Something like that. Was that right? Something like that. I'm going to only go far, far worse next year. So it's going to be fantastic watching me crash and burn. Mate, I'm glad you flexed every week this year because, yeah, a season like that. You better not have two of them. My God. Me and mm. can take my spot in the league if you have two of them. I'll quit. <laughs> yeah, that's fair. Oh, yes. oh now <laughs> me and John's found a way in. He's, he's Everyone thought I was away. annoying when I won two years I... in a row. Imagine how annoying you'll be. <laughs> It's Thanks just, for Trevor. It, it's got to be something. Man, else Man bound to just win every time, then, isn't he? If he joins the league, if he does it, he'll just win There's every time danger. with his rain man ability. Well, I already beat Maddie. I, I should yeah. be in the league over Maddie if I beat him. Swept me to the side already <laughs> once. Yeah. yeah. Man, I just eliminated like play him thing. Just batted me away like a moth to his 100 watt globe. Yeah. Just yeah. casual disregard. <laughs> yep. I so, came back from the dead in that league. I'm pretty sure I was like two and four. And then I just came. No, I was just like around 500 the whole time. Yeah. And I had to win the last three to like get in the playoffs. And then literally second last week, Maddie had to win as well. And we're playing each other. Yeah. I knock him out of the playoffs. Vanquished me. And I'm 
Yeah, uh, I mean, I get in the playoffs like the week after. So then the playoffs is like two weeks after I play Maddie, and then I just go on a tear, and my team is just unstoppable. unstoppable. Based on Austin Eckler, I think Austin Eckler, Kim Allen, like man, those guys, the sort of players I had on that team, so legendary. We know how much that I love Austin Eckler. Yeah, we know yeah, how I'm much in, I love I'm, Austin Eckler. I'm in the same <laughs> division. I'm in the same division as. Maddie next year uh, in Astro yeah. League. So I can't wait to see <laughs> say that I've wiped out the ACT assholes. <laughs> <laughs> two times a year. This is two Twice, times a year. Yeah. Just, just it's a coming wipe. like a freight train. Clean wipe. <laughs> so the, the rivalry's there. I mean, yes. gosh. <laughs> but friendly at the same time. I don't think I've got a winning record against you either. I think you've you've got me in the head-to-head over time too, Taylor. I just don't have that number in front of me. I should have. I should, I should know that all the time. I should have it tattooed on the back of my eyelids. Yeah, and we're combined yeah. like two in a million against Adam. It's great. Yeah, bloody Adam. <laughs> uh, Cannot stand yeah, that guy. Adam, Adam's the villain of the show. He yeah, was that. when it was tell everyone. I can't stand him, but God, I love him. He's perfect for the league because he's so brash and cocky like us, and none of us can <laughs> freaking beat him. But he can't win the championship. It's just the perfect the man balance. Went like what six and seven last season, and he just got in the playoffs. And wait, no, he yeah. missed out to Jackal, right? Yeah, Wasn't he missed it? out because Jackal got in. Thank God for Jackal. Finally, yeah, God Jackal. Bless Jackal. Played that Jackal's been the lead since like day one, from what I've heard. Yeah. And he never made the playoffs. And then last season, it was like winning in. He has yeah. to win to get in the playoffs. Yeah. And then he Delight. finally wins. He's in the playoffs for the first time in like 13 years. 13 years. See, I learned so much about the league. But look at this year, man. I learned so much from the league. See, I learned so much from his league. Like your both your leagues. I learned so much from their league, you know, just. Listening to it, it was just this too is why he had to be on the show, Marv. This is why you had yeah. you couldn't yeah. not have him on the show. No, no, he just barged his way in. He demanded, he demanded microphone time. And now you've got the perfect triumvirate of the three of you together. Triumvirate, yeah. I did not think I was going to hear triumvirate when I got out of bed this morning, Marv. I'm Look, afraid. sophistication yeah. again. There you go, just bring yeah, the sophistication. fits in perfectly. Yeah, I've got, I've got a dictionary at the degree. side of me, and I was looking. Oh, triumvirate! I'll get that one out. Triumvirate. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna look that up later. Yeah, it's what a communications <laughs> degree can get you. Guys. <laughs> yeah, degree. That's how hot something is. Hello, my name is Ben Burrell and this is Bob Dylan Album by Album, a podcast that looks at each Bob Dylan studio recording, funnily enough, album by album. We're going to produce an audio essay or a mini documentary on every single recording, looking at the recording process, also the themes on offer and the musicality of each record as well. If that sounds like something you might want to listen to, then feel free to check out episode one. It's on Bob's 26th studio album, Oh Mercy, which is a fascinating record, not only for the music on offer, but also for how it fits into Bob's back catalogue. Have a look at that and let us know your thoughts. If you want to continue the conversation, we're available on Instagram. You can find us at Bob Dylan Podcast and you can find me on Twitter at Ben Burrell. Thanks for listening and enjoy. So what advice would you give to people if they wanted to start their own podcast? Manjot's on every podcast under the sun. I think you should get this one. <laughs> yeah. Just, all right. All I right. think he's well, taking I'm Joe Rogan podcast. on. Wow, I, I'm I'm the podcast expert here. Wow, and I've been you doing are. it less time. <laughs> yeah, so advice I'd give, I, I reckon, just have fun with it. Just talk about things you like to talk about. You know, things that are interesting, and you, you can't really expect that sort of big audience. I'd say even for like making an Instagram page, I can use that sort of thing too. So just making your own content. The podcast, Instagram page, you know, any social media page. Yeah, YouTube channel. Like, I guess just have fun with it. The audience comes when it comes and, you know, you'll find your own people. I think the best part definitely is you meet people along the way. Like I met today, I meet Marv, you know, great guy, great lad from England, you know, absolute legend. You know, I met Maddie and Taylor, you know, just talking about football. You know, I, I reach out on Instagram, meet more people like it for DMs. Yeah. So it's just, it's a great experience with starting a podcast. Yeah. I think just 
just yeah i mean not don't be too worried about the audience but i guess you know just be grateful for the audience yeah you meet along the way like the people you meet along the way i reckon that's cool i, I just say if you if you're not enjoying it then you're not doing the right thing like if mm-hmm. if if it isn't something that you know you see on the on your schedule it's coming up on a wednesday or something like that and you you're sitting there going oh what the hell am I going to talk about? I, I'm not looking forward to this. That it's it's not the right thing for you. Like it's find something that you really really enjoy, and it doesn't feel like work to you. Like you want to mm-hmm. be able to talk freely on a podcast like this about something you enjoy, not something that you're forced to talk about. So I, I would just say find something you really really enjoy, and something that seamlessly comes out of your mouth. <laughs> it's not mm-hmm. something that you actually have to sit there and think about. Um, and, and, and just enjoy yourself. Like my angel said, have fun. Um, no one's forcing anyone to get on and do these podcasts. Like if you're not having fun, it's just, it's just stupid being on one. So just, yeah. just enjoy yourself, have fun. And, you know, that's all I can really say because I, I know I have an absolute blast doing these and I don't, I, I look forward to it every single week, put it that way. So that, I, I, that's all I could say. Matt, yeah, <laughs> what do people no. like listening to when they listen to a podcast themselves? Well, that's a good way to design a podcast that you think is going to be worth listening to. Yep. And I mean, the podcasts I enjoy the most are definitely from people who are talking about a passion subject. For me, American football is definitely that. There's 100 million people who talk American football. Um, so let's get a bit more specific. What's something I like that's a bit more specific than that? Fantasy football, not as many people talking about it. I mean, that's blowing up. A lot more people are talking about it now. But it was something where it's like, well, still there's a fun in doing that because it's not something that's native to us. And and I mean, you, you can just hear from these guys, poor, poor Omar, he's just had to listen to us pretty much take over his show that's- because – the subject comes so naturally to us. We all care about mm. it. We don't just like it. We kind of live it. I mean, yep. my phone pings at three in the morning with Adam Schefter telling oh, yeah. me some chump has signed in Nowheresville, a guy I've probably never even heard of. <laughs> but this is a level of wanting to to be involved in it all the time and, um, and and not a day goes by where I'm not consuming some content that's going to make me smarter to be able to just talk really freely about it and surround myself with people to talk really wonderfully and freely with. I think the, the shows that I've enjoyed the most in our genre that helped me think about how how making a show like this could really work are people like the big ones, like ESPN has a fantasy football show that I've been listening to since it was only a podcast and not a very Matt, successful one. Matthew Berry. Matthew Berry. Yeah. Stefania Bell, who's the injury analyst on that, and then a cavalcade of third people, but over time has become a guy who's actually a really well-respected NFL insider. Um, they all talk like they're just best mates. They really do. And they've known each other for a heap of a long time and took a little while for them to get the chemistry together, but they they have it. The fantasy footballers who are also an American set of guys who started a podcast (laughs) about their own league, kind of like where we started. And they built on it and built on it and turned into a full-time job because the market needed it and they provided the product. Does the market need three Australians doing it? Don't know. Maybe not. Uh, we're also not trying to turn into our life. It, it, at the moment, it is really just a passion project that's fun. If it turns into something bigger than that eventually one day, that'd be really terrific. Not going to hang my hat on it. Just really enjoying the fact that this is something that we can do as a passion project and three of us enjoy doing. And and like this, we fill up a whole like 40-minute Zoom session before we even start our show of just the energy and excitement of being in the same yeah. little room together each week we fill that with nonsense. We'll talk all other sports. We'll talk about what's going on in our lives. We'll talk about just nonsense things that have happened in our week. And then, yeah. then all of a sudden, okay, oh, okay, well, we better get our shit together for the show. And, <laughs> and that, I think, in itself is its own little show as well. And we've started to work on, well, maybe we can bring a subject to talk about in some of that sometimes. And maybe that can be its own thing of just enjoying the camaraderie of three dudes um, who are about to get together to do a show. And that can be its own thing. So I think those are probably the two things that are most important for anybody who's about to start making their own podcast or dreams of it is what do you like listening to in a podcast? Yep. How do you make a show a lot like that? Two, what is it that you're specialised in? It's easy to talk about where you don't have to really rehearse and think about it over and over again and turn into some sort of robotic creature on the end of a microphone for something you can enjoy and talk really freely on. So I think they're just the two mm-hmm. key things. Yep. So you've almost pointed to it. I was going to say, so what do you listen to? 
yourselves podcast oh, who wants to take this one first you guys are podcast guys i was even going to just touch on one you just said the fantasy footballers um I actually really, I kind of model myself a bit on them. Um, I really, really enjoy their content specifically. They also have a show um, uh, called The Spitballers. So basically they do a, um, they do their main podcast that they, you know, basically are known for is the fantasy footballers, but they don't take themselves too seriously. They do all the analysis and they, and they definitely put out, um, you can tell that they are really, really good at what they do, but they also don't take themselves too seriously and they have a joke and they have a laugh and you can tell they're three best friends that grew up together yeah. because they just got such a mind meld and they, um, they get on so well with each other and, um, it, it's, it's just such a great mix between serious analysis and just feeling like you're listening to a podcast of three mates talking. And then that's why they did the spin off uh, of, of Spitballers because it's literally about nothing. Like it's, it's, yeah. they play would you rather games and, um, and, you know, talk about, they do a draft at the end that they basically draft like everyday things and just random stuff. Like, and they talk about like your local wizard turns up and, and offers you this or that, blah, blah, blah. They talk about absolutely nothing nothing but it's it's awesome listening for 50 minutes so they're my two main podcasts honestly um i listen to some different uh nfl fantasy podcasts as well but that's definitely my main one and basically my main two podcasts that i definitely do listen to um Mm -hmm. i listen to some other fantasy ones to do with some of the australian sports as well but um, I definitely just wanted to sort of say that the fantasy footballers are my main one because I feel like I model myself on them because they they definitely enjoy what they do. Um, none of it seems forced, uh, and they just seem like three really really down to earth blokes who love what they're doing. So yeah, I just thought I'd say that. Cool. Yeah. Manjo. Oh, me next. Uh, yeah, you go, Manjo. Uh, yeah, I need to invest a bit more time into listening to a few podcasts. I think, you know, mostly it's just listening to a few friends, like yes. Gridiron guys, They're awesome. friends of ours, me and Maddie's here. Yeah, so I listened to them a few. I listened to, um, well, before, you know, before I came on the show, the Aussie end zone, before I came on the show, the of course, Aussie NFL fantasy as well. You know, before I went on the shows, I was a listener. So yeah. I knew what I was going into, which is great. So... You know, other than that, I like Move the Sticks podcast. I listen to a few of those episodes. They talk really in depth about a few NFL sort of things. It's more on the scouting, sort of analyzing players and stuff, but it's still pretty good. I'd say, like, it kind of has some sort of fantasy relevance because you can see, oh, this player could have like a good game, like, because. They always play good against this team, for example. And that can be used in fantasy. So it's like, oh, I can start him literally next week. So, yeah, Uh, move the sticks. There's definitely a few others I'm going to look into. Yeah, so I'm just really starting out. So, you know, any suggestions, you know, hit me up. Doesn't have to be full. Marv's the right place here. Marv is the podcast guru. Mm, He knows everyone in podcast world. I was just going to say the Bill Simmons podcast is actually the one I probably listened to the most. Yeah, I bet you do. I, 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 oh, the I ringer. mentioned that first because yeah, yeah. So he basically um, runs the Ringer, um, but his main uh, podcast, the Bill Simmons podcast, because they oh, yeah. he's got sort of his main sports that he's um, into himself, but. Um, it, it's very well versed. Like they even get into like some uh, movies and stuff like that. Like, but mainly he's got his main sports like NBA, NFL that he's really, really into. And he's an old ESPN sort of um, journalist and yeah, sort yeah. of insider. So he he kind of started the whole podcast craze. Like he got in on early, and he's kind of known as like the godfather yeah. of podcasting because yeah. he's just he started from the bottom of it, basically left ESPN and started doing that. Yeah. And now he's just made an absolute name for himself doing it. Um, and, you know, he's, he's got very good knowledge across different sports, but um, those NFL and NBA specifically, he's, he's very, very well versed in. He knows a lot of people within the game as well. So he's, he's just got a, he's, he's another guy that you can tell he loves doing what he does and, he, he he's not like he, you can tell he's not reading off the script or anything. He's he's very much. He brings on his his guests and they have a great laugh and you know it, it's just one of those podcasts I try and like mirror myself on as well. Yeah. I'm Agent Scott. 
And I'm Cam the Provocateur. And we're from the Spy Hards Podcast. That's right, and you are listening to Pods Like Us, the podcast that also has the Midas touch. Okay, and now to Matty, who listens to almost as many as I do, I think. <laughs> oh, I'm, I'm trying. Um, yeah, and I think being a bloke in my late 30s, uh, it's illegal to not listen to true crime. So I listen to a bunch yeah. of true crime podcasts. Uh, the, the one that actually Marv put me in touch with this one, and I've got to thank him a whole bunch, is that there's an Australian podcast written by a lady in Melbourne named Felicity called Unknown Passage. And it's actually terrific. The premise of that is it's stories about people who have gone missing or died while they're overseas. So in, in countries that aren't their homeland, whether they're residents there or whether they're just on a, a holiday, cruise ships come up a fair bit too because there's a lot of iffiness about what happens and the legalities around who's in charge of what when someone goes missing on a cruise ship. Uh, super show. Marv put me in touch with it. She's got about 150 episodes up and they are terrific. I would recommend that to anybody. Mm. Because uh, you get to jump around the globe, but you also get an Australian host, which is terrific because us Australian hosts, you know, we, we bring the Lex Factor. Um, I've also been listening to a couple of Australian based ones as well that are around stories of people who've gone missing here as well, which are a bit more locally famous. There was one in, in the summer just gone called Shandy Story that was sponsored by Harvey Norman, a big uh, tech company here, and, um, and by a, a big newspaper in Melbourne that was all around someone who'd gone missing, uh, sorry, who'd been murdered in, in a north queensland town a few years ago when the inquest kind of fell over um the, the there was a, a big court case around it and and the person that was accused wasn't found guilty but then there's been a whole bunch of new evidence come up there were holes in all the, the investigations this thing has really brought that to life and there's another one about a person who was murdered in tasmania as well but with similar sort of things um, there's somebody who's in jail who we're not even sure should be there. So I've been listening to a couple of those sort of podcasts. But man, if it's it's hard not to enjoy the sport podcasts. And and like Taylor said, the fantasy footballers, I really enjoy them because they've got that real breakfast radio feel about them. And and like Taylor says too, I've sort of taken a bit of a look at the host of that show, a fellow named Andy, and thought to myself, gee, if, if I could learn a little bit, be a better host for the two wonderful talent that I've got here who provides so much of the heavy lifting for our show now, the way our show is going to go. Um, but, you know, I was listening to the ESPN NFL fantasy football podcast for the longest time, I was listening to uh, NBA ones I've, for the longest time, listening to guys like Colin Cowherd, the Mike and Mike podcast way back when Mike and Mike were a thing on ESPN. So a lot of sports based ones as well. Uh, but in much more recent history, my wife has gotten into Tudor history. Uh, so I've been listening to a lot of <laughs> a lot of uh, especially Tudors, but also just English, um, English royal history podcasts over time as well. And I've got a bit of fascination with Hadrian's Wall. So I've, I've listened to pretty much everything there is to listen to on podcasts at the moment about Hadrian's Wall as well. Uh, I've got a bit of a goal to get from the West Coast to the East Coast one day. Cool. What was I going to say? Some of those that you mentioned, uh, Matty, um, you, you can't send me a me- can't, can't get your wife to send me a message with some of those Tudor ones, can you? Because Louise would love those. Oh, yeah. No, I've got a list. I'll come to you. We'll... we'll- get your people in touch with my people we'll do lunch it'll be great <laughs> virtual <laughs> takes a lot of time to absolutely. get there now that there's no concord yeah i mean god that's a while back you these boys down here they wouldn't understand they're too young <laughs> Man, <laughs> doesn't that. even has probably never even heard of a concord oh it would have been time before man was born Are you kidding <laughs> wait what's concord <laughs> Uh, you'll need Wikipedia, brother. <laughs> yeah, I'm actually going to search on what the hell this is. Taylor's got a raw smile of familiarity, <laughs> uh, so so we'll let him be, I think. <laughs> oh, I had the uh, wife's store manager just check in if I was okay. So <laughs> I, was, I was probably a little bit zoned out in the last minute. <laughs> Hilarious. So how can people okay. find you and get hold of you guys? Oh, got to give this to Manjot because he's everywhere. Go, Manjot. Look, Instagram. <laughs> At Aussie NFL Fantasy on Instagram. Uh, there's also the Twitter page at, at Astro League Pod, but it's Aussie NFL Fantasy on Twitter. Um, you know, Facebook, we're redeveloping that, we'll but there. it's still Astro League 2021 on Facebook, but we we're redeveloping. We you know, we got, we got the um, YouTube going up. Aussie NFL Fantasy on YouTube. Just search us up there. You'll find us. And TikTok, you know. TikTok, 
at Oz, to Oz the NFL quick. Fantasy. <laughs> it started today, yeah. literally today. What about yeah. all the pastry press, brother? You got to hit that. You got to hit the Aussie end zone. Oh, okay, okay. You got to put right, Manjo yeah. out there, mate. Yeah, okay, okay. We got to put the Manjo, the, the legend, the legend out here. Yeah. So yeah, the Aussie end zone. You can find that pretty much everywhere. Like, oh yeah, I forgot. You know, Spotify, you know, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, any podcatchers, Anchor. You can find all Aussie End Zone, Aussie NFL Fantasy, you know, yep. on there. Um, same with like Broncos Faithful Podcast. If you're into rugby league, that's that's my new thing. Yeah, but you know, my main sources for myself is um Instagram, so uh at pastry press NFL and at pastry press sports. I think pastry press NFL is kind of dying right now. Because Patriot Press Sports, there's one post where I literally predicted an NBA playoffs um, series, and it's literally got 900 likes, and nothing yeah. on Patriot Press NFL touches it. So it's like literally my second account is, yeah, I think Patriot Press NFL a bit washed, but anyway, we're coming back strong. Don't worry. But <laughs> we're going to have some good collabs with Aussie NFL Fantasy. We're going to have some good collabs with the Aussie end zone. We're going to get it up there. You know, um, yeah, there's a Facebook page, the Pastry Press NFL, which I never, which is a uh, repost of like Instagrams. And I, I just never bothered to spend time on it. Uh, I do have a Twitter at the man T. Look, I, I messed up when I made Twitter and I just, I, I should have been like the man M, but it just, it, I was trying to write out the man jot the myth the legend. Obviously that wouldn't fit in a Twitter handle. So yeah, I messed that one up. <clears throat> and then what else? Yeah, I got TikTok too. Add Pastry Press Sports on TikTok. That's well, anything for my Instagrams just goes on there. So, yeah, yeah, it's good. I'm everywhere. I guess I'm kind of like Eddie. Yeah, it's like how they the most say famous it. Australian at the moment. No, now that Shane Warne is gone. R.I.P. Shane Warne. Manjot was number Bruce two. Shane now Warne. Manjot's number one. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's true. Paul Nobody Logan, more famous. Kylie Minogue something. actually not Australian anymore. She's yeah. English now. So, yeah, it's now clearly Manjot and Daylight to second. Yeah. And Paul yeah. Logan's not got any chance. No. I don't think we count him as Australian anymore. Anyway, I think we've pretty much said you're a Kiwi after all that tax evasion. We, we don't want yeah. you. Oh, yes. <laughs> Taylor, where do we find you, mate? <laughs> ah, Taylor. <laughs> Mate, who knows, mate? I'm just sort of floating around. Um, the nearest pub. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm just at Taylor41 on Instagram. You want to hit me up and abuse me because I'm always writing on someone else's posts about something stupid they said. Uh, pretty much the same on Facebook. Uh, just Taylor Goodall. You'll find me posting, you know, someone said something about my about my uh, Dallas Mavericks or something and I'm yeah. abusing them and <laughs> You know, talking about Luca being better than anyone. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, you're pretty much going to find me uh, just at my name on those two. You're yeah, probably Newcastle not going to find me on TikTok. Yeah. I, uh, I'm i pretty much getting forced into having a TikTok just because we've got one on this. So, <laughs> I'm, yeah. um, I'm, I mean, I, I'm oh, We're all going to learn it. We'll, we'll, I'm not the yeah. oldest out of us three, but I feel like I'm the most curmudgeon-y. <laughs> <laughs> like I'm I love 30, that idea. I'm, well... 30, you two are, 32 going 32 going on 83 basically yeah. well hilarious. my friends actually was saying the other day one of my friends was just like i'm sure maddie and taylor are like 28 there's no way they're like 40 and 32 there's no actual <laughs> yeah. way yeah no, the 40s coming the 40s that's, coming that's good. Yeah, no, like okay. freight train you oh, see more yeah and you're going over to video as well <laughs> And I actually well, got to agree. You guys got that sort of. Yeah, area. you'll be able to see the gray in the yeah. beard. It's coming. Yeah, it's. I can't hide this beard. The node. The node. The node's coming beard. soon. Yeah, God, I'm starting to realize all the imperfections. Uh, not that I didn't yeah. know already. This is why radio was my... my medium. This is why I was on radio. Yeah, just I get rid of my. Get rid of my eight chins as well. That'd be good. <laughs> I'll, I'll stick to audio. <laughs> yeah, Mom's got it worked out. <laughs> Um, I'm trying to think where hasn't Manjot mentioned? Um, so we've got all the Aussie NFL on Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, Spotify, uh, TikTok, Spotify yes. Apple, Apple Podcasts, Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Amazon, Stitcher, yeah, yeah. all of them. Um, for Anchor. me, I've yeah. I've got a my own Instagram, which is mainly 
I, I run marathons in my spare time because I'm really not a well person. So that's something I do for fun. Um, and you can find me there at Queen Bro Matt. But um, I've actually, I've created a page about Matt, the podcaster, and it, it talks a little bit about some of the things going behind the scenes as a podcaster. My life, I'm, I'm a dad of two kids. I, I run a bit uh, and some of the things that go on in, in life behind the microphone. And that's at Matty Podcast. Um, and, you know, these guys kind of get dragged into that a little bit sometimes as well. But, uh, yeah, really our, our front-facing stuff is all very much, if you just bash in Aussie NFL fantasy, we're going to come up all over the place. I know, I've tested it. I was on Google today testing it to make sure when we talked to you today that that would be what happens. Um, and hopefully our content there is is fun to interact with. We've been, you know, we've been really messing around with the culture clash stuff. It doesn't get much more culture clash than having – Three blokes talking American football on a British podcast. I mean, come on. There we go. Where yeah. where else are you going to get that? Yeah, um, absolutely. So, you know, you've been really gracious to have us on, Mark. I very nearly got Greg from Brad Council on as well to come and talk to you if he'd have been awake. <laughs> that would be awesome. I love Brad Council. I didn't mention them in my podcast listens. They've got like 80 no. episodes. I've been listening to them since they were back in the 20s. Bad Council. Wow. Oh, that is the best nonsense podcast ever. If yeah, I don't, I don't have a bad word to say about Bad Cancel podcast. I've got a T-shirt of theirs. They've got a laptop sticker. I love Bad Cancel. They're awesome. Absolutely. Anyway, thanks for chatting with me today, guys. Yeah, 100%. <laughs> thanks for having us. Sorry. Anyway, to find pods like us, just look on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and TikTok. And you can also find me on Patreon if you want any extra episodes that uh, don't go out as main episodes. There's some extra bits and bobs and all sorts of stuff that goes on there. But until next time, thanks everyone for listening. I hope you listen again to another episode of Pods Like Us.